On today's episode of Kilts and Culture with USA Kilts, we try Grange Stone Bourbon Cask Finish. Hmm. Howdy, boys and girls. Welcome to Kilts and Culture. I am Rocky. This is Eric. Yo. And I can actually do that now. Uh, I'm not like on on the weird screen where I was always going hey, the wrong hey, direction. Watch where you're pointing that thing. Exactly. Right? So now I can actually point and we're back in the same room, rocking out as we used to. Um, and this month we have a special guest star. Um, Mac is off today, so we have Mr. Ian over da, da, behind da, 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 da. The, uh, the other camera thingy over there. And today we have a special treat. We are going to try Grangestone Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Bourbon Cask Finish. Um, this was a gift to us by our friend Kirk Kinneman. So, you know, spoiler alert, I have had it before. Well, that's not really a spoiler, but it's I have had obvious. it before. It's kind of obvious. Yeah, it's, well, it's a little well, obvious. Well, already. well I've, I've enjoyed <laughs> some. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, <laughs> <laughs> dangers when you have multiple bottles of scotch in the office. Um, yeah, it's a rough but, life. Ian and Eric, neither of them have had it, so this is a blind, not blind tasting, but it is a first tasting for them. It is my sixth, fifth, something around there. That's how know. big the glass was. Indeed. <laughs> All right. That's so weird. You just handed me a glass. I know. This well, we're bizarre. we're allowed now. A, we're okay. vaccinated. We're and B, we're in the bubbles. The bubbles. So, say when. That's is that fine. good? Right. Eight thirty. Mr. Ian. One over and collect should, yours. Should I wait to please? add water to this? Or are we doing the. Um, free you water can have water, water now water? if you want. Okay. It's up to you. Do, so. I'll give Ian a touch more. Ian has to walk around all the Science. sound blankets and whatnot. You get to see his kilt right there. How pretty he looks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're all back in the studios. I'm just <laughs> I'm just excited to be back in the studios. What did he do? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Fair. Don't you worry your pretty little head over it. Always, people always making fun of me. I'm mm -hmm. always the butt of jokes. <laughs> I really don't care. Um, all right. So anyway, Grainstone, we're going to pour a little bit of water in, if you want, to mm -hmm. open it up a touch. Mm -hmm. um, not, a, not a ton, just a little bit, a little, little droppy poo. Um, Mr. Ian, why don't you regale us with some of the, uh, uh, the flavor notes and the, the nosing and aromas and all that. Yes. So the aroma is a soft, delicate single malt with hints of leafy spring blossom overlaid with the subtle vanilla oakiness. Vanilla. Had to be vanilla. Had to be vanilla. <laughs> the taste is a beautifully mellow and sweet with a gentle oaky character, gentle spice, and fruity character. Gentle. And gentle. And the finish is sweet and crisp. It's, it's, okay. like, a, it's like a mother's caress. Mm. Um. I definitely smell the oakiness a little bit, um, and it, it is a smooth, well-balanced scent. Mm. Okay. It's I don't get a big burny smell. Picked up a little bit of a apricot-y smell when I first sniffed it, but my nose is broken. <coughs> <laughs> Breathe in too deep on that one. Yeah. Mm. Are you gonna do it? All right. There we go. Since I've had it before, I'm going to let you guys kind of uh, take the lead a little bit. i the oakiness is definitely the, the strongest flavor. I'm finding it a little burning. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Did you pour water in? Yeah, maybe not enough. I okay. did as well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's, very, it's got that hot alcoholic burn that's, that's yeah, strong. right on the front. It's like, woof. And it's oaky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree on the oaky. I don't get the alcoholic burn almost at all says the guy who was choking after smelling it <laughs> so he just he just got out of his system i got <laughs> I, I got some down the wrong nostril yeah. it was okay it, it the, burned away his exactly. sciences took the hit so you know, it's, yeah <laughs> no it's I, i'm it's 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 warming mm -hmm. i definitely feel it's it definitely you know warming warm down here but it's very like now let me ask you this the a uh, tiny bit more water the alcohol uh that you guys are talking about does do you um is that a big Ooh, negative, or is it just kind of, it's just, it's a fact? 
Mm, for me at the moment, it's a negative, but it, I, okay. I tend to okay. let things open up for a long time. Fair. That's the one thing I've learned about doing these, you know, just, you know, things change over time. Yeah. I would say it's generally more of a fact, but it, I don't like when it overpowers mm -hmm. everything else. I Has like it, it overpowered more balanced. it for you? I think so, a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I don't dislike anything about it, but it, it's not as balanced as I do. How is the today. finish now that you've been sitting and you haven't sipped it for a few minutes? It's described on, uh, by their marketing as sweet and crisp. I don't get the sweetness. I don't. I don't either. I don't find it's, it sweet at all. It's not, especially even with either Roman taste profiles. It was suggesting sweet and vanilla and things like that. It doesn't come through as very sweet to me. I, I'm, I'm, I get a little bit of the sweet, like sides of the mouth ish. Um, I'm it's, getting some of the floral. Yeah. I wouldn't call it sweet, but I'm getting. I'm getting. If I let sit. <clears throat> and mellow, I'm getting some of the floral esters going up into my noses. Into my noses. All of them. I need to Photoshop that. <laughs> Face of noses. <laughs> if any of you out there have ever had Grainstone, let us know in the comments. Let us know if you dig it, if you don't dig it, if you're drinking it right now. Good on you. Um, <laughs> Unless you're at work <laughs> or driving. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's... I dig it. It's it's a nice mellow. It's not. It is not my normal um, peaty, smoky Isla kind of thing that I do dig. Um, but if I'm in a if I'm not in that mood, I will either go for Shield Egg or this has become. I won't say it's become. Because I've only had you know five or six of them. But it's it's one of those that I I could see it becoming over months. For the record, for the record, good sir, we got this in December. That was full so. this morning. <laughs> that bottle was full this morning. The uh, so no, it's it, it's I could see this being a go-to as a yeah sure I'm kind of in a, a chill I'm not, mood. I'm just not getting those nuances that they're talking about. I'm just I'm having trouble picking out. I mean, maybe you know, it's 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 allergy season for me, so maybe I'm at a detriment with this. But it's just I don't know. I'm not getting the complexity that I thought I was going to get based on those flavor notes. But I will say this: it's either I will say that. It's either so well balanced that you're not getting the complexity. Oh, it is or, the zen. It is the zen of scotch. It's, it's right in that sweet spot. Mm. Um, no, it's or not I don't. Sweet spot. I don't get a lot of the complexity either. It's just a good, mild, just kind of hanging out, sipping. Now here's the question: Does it remind you of bourbon? This is the bourbon cast, right? Oh, you're getting the bourbon. Yeah, bourbon. It's matured in yes, bourbon fish. barrels. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I was getting, I got a little bit of that. And I think it, some of that oakiness is what I put down to that. Yeah. It just reminded me of a, of a bourbon oakiness. Yeah. I can see I it. i say that. I'm not, I'm not a refined enough of palate to to I, say like, oh, yes, this was a sherry cask. Mm, it's a slight <laughs> jaw on the upper and, left yeah, side. Yeah, bear in mind, we're talking about yeah. vague Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not it's, trying to say I'm something I'm Obviously, I'm not an expert, but... No, yeah. it's... I, I don't get that particular thing, but I don't normally get... The only time I get a, a cask thing is if I get heartburn from it. Hmm. Then I'm like, oh, yep, that's oak cask, you know, kind of... Okay. But this one, I don't get that from. Nothing about it yeah. specifically screams bourbon at me, but the lack of the, the smokiness of the Islas and the peatiness, I'm not really picking up on. That makes me think a little bit more like an American bourbon yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, okay. So I'm not a tasting expert either, but what it's missing yeah. more so than what it is is kind of making me think a little bit. If you just gave it to me with no sense of what it is, what do you got? Eh, mm -hmm. It's bourbon. Well, they do, but they do a series of these. Um, there was um, they have a, a different series, uh, different casks. They do it in sherry casks as sherry well. Cask I know one, at least. And they had uh, something else I thought was odd when I was looking at looking for pictures for the email right. announcement. Um, they have some aged a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. But I can rum see cask this. finished. Rum cask, yeah. See, I'd probably like Oof. that one better. And they have one aged 21 years. That's too many years. No, it's not. It's going to be <laughs> a billion dollars. But <clears throat> possibly, the, um, I could see this pairing well with like a a cheese plate or crackers. Um, that like, was one of the questions. Geez. Yeah, what I could see it pair pairing with? well with that. Um, maybe, maybe chocolate. Maybe. I was going to say that um, with a steak. Fair. <laughs> um, well, everything goes with steak. It's. Steak goes with steak. You know what goes with steak? And more steak. It's mm. bacon. You know what rhymes with Friday? <clears throat> with scotch. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, I dig it. All right, Mr. Ian. Score, 1 to 10. Decimals, 
included? 5.1. 5.1. Yes. Mm. Okay. 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 Uh, 4.6. Not into it. I'm going to say 7, 8. Oh, yeah. That yeah. High. It's the magic thing um, is 8. It's something that you would travel to go get. Like, I would drive somewhere to get it. Eight Delaware. and above. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one was a gift. Always drive to um, Delaware. The, um, yes, hooray for Pennsylvania's spectacular laws on liquor. Um, five is, like, bog standard. Seven is, you know, it's it's good. You would you would purchase it if you needed to. Above eight, you drive for it. Okay. okay. Two or below, you politely refuse. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. angrily refuse <laughs> if it's, like, point five. Yeah. So okay. Disrespect me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right, boys and girls, you know the drill. Load in your questions down below. Um, anything you want to know about kilts, Celtic culture, we are your humble servants. We will be here to answer whatever questions you have for us. Yippee Kaye. We deem our questions worthy. Yes. All right. Um, I go first, though, right? Sure. Mr. Eric. My famous clipboard here. What do we got? Hand painted by Lance, or one of our yeah. uh, guys downstairs. Was it Lance or Lance's wife? Oh, that was Lance. It's one of them. Okay. Whatever. I forget. Yeah, he did a good job. Fancy. All right. Let's start off with... Because I know you've been waiting for it, Mark. This one's for you. Mark Essery asked us, to belt or not to belt? That is the question. Uh, I think there are times when a kilt belt should or, or should not be worn. Yes. I know there are times when a kilt belt should or should not be worn. But he would appreciate being re-edumacated. When do you and when do you not wear a kilt belt, according to convention? Yes, USA people... kilts re-education camps. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, Send you into the mountains. Exactly. It's it's like a little camper. red kilt book. Exactly. Um, Rocky Rigger, Rocky Rigger. <laughs> Do you get that reference at all? Yes. Okay. All right. The uh, our great and honorable leader. Um, the uh, when do you wear a kilt belt or not wear a kilt belt? Um, it is not, because the kilt is held up with its own straps and buckles, you know, current day kilts, not talking from, you know, 1900s or before. Um, the uh, uh, kilt is held with its own straps and buckles. You do not need a kilt belt for it to physically stay on your body. So there are times where it is more convenient, less convenient, that kind of thing. Um, and there's also like some, some faux pas where you do or don't wear it. So if you're wearing, you know, like I am wearing right now, Casual, um, have a you know Oxford shirt on, you know day sporing, just kind of a casual setting. Yes, you can wear a, a kilt belt or kilt belt. Mm -hmm. If you are wearing a dress sporing, or if you are wearing a vest, those are the main two times where you do not, either you don't wear or you don't have to wear a kilt belt buckle, um, with minor exceptions. There's always like a little weird, you know things. So if you're wearing a dress born, the top, the little knob on the top of the dress born on the top of the cantle will actually like clank and bang into the, the buckle as you sit down and as you move around. Right. So generally when you're wearing a dress born, you typically don't wear a kilt belt. The other time is when you're wearing a vest. Um, when you have a vest on, it will cover up the buckle. Therefore, what's the point of wearing a buckle? Or you'll only see like a tiny little bit of it on like the very bottom V um, so, eh, there's no reason for it. It's not a functional thing, unless your kilt's fallen off, yes. Um, it's not a functional thing, so at that point, you just forego the kilt belt buckle. The only exception I would say when you're wearing a dress sporn is if you're wearing sporn suspenders, sporn hangers, whatever you want to call them. Um, in, you know, if you're a, a man of substance, as they say, <clears throat> You may not want to wear the sporn chain or a sporn strap because it kind of underlines the belly. So a lot of bigger guys will wear sporn suspenders, which are little like fobs that go over top of the belt and they kind of suspend or hang your sporn from the belt. In that instance, if, even if you're wearing a dress sporn, yeah, you can get away with it. It's not the end of the world. Will somebody kind of throw you a side glance? I don't know. Sure, but you know, who cares? <clears throat> I was gonna say, I think it's one of those, uh, it's one of those conventions that I see guys breaking the rule on all the time. It is not really followed very closely 
by a lot of people. Um, I think it makes sense. I think that uh, uh, the line looks better if you're wearing a vest without having the belt and buckle underneath it. You don't have that bulge, the, the weird shape there. You know, I mean, especially if it's a if it's a more modern belt buckle, like some of the ones put out by our company, like the one Rocky's wearing now, is actually a very large, very very hefty buckle. Speaking of bulges. <laughs> Eh, you're fine. <laughs> but but you know, it's it's the buckles are works of art, and and uh, they're not uh, anymore. Most of them are not like the simple little stamped things that you grew up with, like in, in a bagpipe band uniform. They stick out. They have a shape to them. They have girth to them. And uh, that plus the belt, it's just it ruins the line of the vest. So yeah, I think if you're wearing a vest closed, you should do without the belt and buckle. Agreed. In a, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, even even like uh, kilt seller advertising I've seen from overseas, um, and and rental uh, imagery. You know, here's a great outfit for your wedding. You see guys with a full Prince Charlie and the belt and buckle. I Is do it... e even even stuff from Scotland. Even That's just, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it, like, yes, the rule is broken. You know, up and down. Um, just yeah. because it's from Scotland doesn't mean they're doing it traditionally and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but it's it's. A, a traditionalist, someone you know, looking back um, uh, to you know traditional classic Highland dress, it, it it wouldn't be done that way. Guys are breaking the rule. You know, who's to say whether they should or not? But it's kind of a mixed bag at this point. Well, to some degree. time, I think the the buckles look cool, <clears throat> and people just want to have the more is more. They want to have every piece of the of the coolness. You know, all the extra bling. So, yep. yeah. if you're if you're gonna be uh, uh, a bit, I forget the word. You're gonna remind me in a second. Um, uh, if you're gonna be a bit uh, something about it, um, f not flippant, but mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. See, we're in the same room now. I feel all weird. Um, if you're it, uh, belt buckle and you know metal manufacturers, um, uh, not sarcastic. Darn it! What's the word? I can't think of it. Uh, um, the uh, people who manufacture the Cynical. buckle. Cynical, yes, yes. See, I told you you knew I was going to word. That word always escapes me. I don't know why. That's that's the one I always break on. Anyway, if you're going to be cynical about it, here we're going to cut that right there. If you're going to be cynical about it, <clears throat> belt buckle manufacturers and spore and cantle manufacturers, the companies that make the actual the metal rim for the top of the cantle, oftentimes will make matching sets so that people can wear it together. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of been discreetly encouraged because if you're going to be cynical about it, you can wear both things together and, hey, look, it's a matching set. I'll buy them both. Traditionally, right. it's right. not done, but you can if you want to from a sales perspective. It makes yeah. more sense for companies to kind of push buy it more. forward. Buy yes. more. Oh, you're not quite done yet. You're missing one more piece of your outfit. You got to get this too. Yeah. Yeah, that is, I, I think you're, I think there is likely some manufacturers and sellers out there who are a bit cynical like that. But, um, you know, your mileage may vary on this, but I would personally recommend if you're doing a formal event with a, a waistcoat or even semi-formal, you know, and you're wearing a waistcoat, leave the belt at home. Yeah. Back of your mind, remember, when it comes to Highland wear, the general overarching rule is less is more. Oddly enough, because a lot of this stuff is so over-the-top looking. Yep. But you want to choose those over-the-top parts carefully. Yep. So. Indeed. All right, Enough Mr. Said. Ian, who do we have in the audience for us today? So just want to shout out, a lot of people are loving the fact that everybody's in the room together with no masks on. There's about 4,700 comments about that. <laughs> uh, they're all very excited about it. Um, Welcome to our room. Yes. So I kind of have a hard time finding questions amidst all those comments, if anything. <laughs> uh, I'll start, actually, with a specific comment from one, uh, I, I think it's pronounced Dan McMichael. Howdy from the front. Get ready for the rain. It's heading your way. Uh-oh. Sweet. Uh -oh. But I do have a question for you, and I'll start out with a little bit of a fun one here from StrayCat1674 on YouTube. He says, so in the pic you shared the cover photo for the event, uh, Rocky had a dirk and Eric was empty-handed. Do we actually get to see this battle now? I would love to do a <laughs> mock kung fu movie, like 1970s style, with you can see the wires and... The bad subtitles. I grew up on Kung Fu Theater Saturday mornings when I was a kid, and I just love that stuff. So I would love for us to go, like... Or if anybody's seen Kung Fury, the mock, the mock movie that came out a couple years ago. Was but, it Saturday morning? Like, I remember coming home from church, and... It was, like on Sundays? It was on Sundays for Maybe me. Maybe it was. Maybe PHL it was. 17, baby. 
you know, that's you know, mm-hmm. UHF mm-hmm. and then, you know, dialed over mm-hmm. to 17. Yeah, I think we're up around here, so it was a different channel for me, but okay. Um, but yeah, no, the point is, the point is, I love that stuff, and I would love to have USA Celts versus the Hopping Vampires. That would be fantastic. You, yeah, and you, vampires. you know, from Hopping, you know, because you're a horror movie guy, yeah. Vampires I'm... in Chinese movies hop because they don't suck blood, they suck chi energy out of you. <laughs> Like hopping vampires in blue jeans, <clears throat> coming after coming after the innocent people of USA Kilt Land, USA Kilt Land, USA Kilt, yeah. and, and and we have to go out and defend the city. Now that are, would be awesome. Are we wearing like solid black kilts? You know, like are we ninjas? Oh, there's lots of different scenes. Okay. There'd be, there'd be okay. one scene where you have to go and invade the vampire tomb, and then we'd be in ninja outfits for that. But then there'd be another scene where it's just like. Maybe you have a duel against the, the head vampire and you're in full Highland regalia, you know. Hmm. Get your hmm. get your Prince Charlie on. No, know? my my weapon is the uh, the crook. A chromok. <laughs> a chromok. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Or a chromok with a sword inside. Yes. Whoosh! That'd Indeed. be great. Yes. No, no, no. I have to have like the long white hair and the long beard. Okay. So like my only weapon is the stick. Ah. Ah. Yes. yes. Think your kelpful's good, huh? Indeed. Indeed. Ah. <laughs> Got you. All right. Thank Enough. you for totally derailing our educational Indeed. show, Stray Cat. Yes. Right out of the gates. Nothing to do with island culture. Love it. <laughs> Ian, what do we got next? Let's do it. Yeah, I'll do another one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you did that to yourself. <laughs> yes. Ha-ha. <laughs> so, uh, well, let's go. Let's go for a hard one then, since you thought that one was, was too Ooh, fun. hard. Ooh, um, okay. This is maybe more for weavers than it is for kilt makers or uh, retailers. But what weight, or th- what weight thread of yarn would you recommend for a hand-woven tartan if you were making a simple sample from Lucky Behemoth on YouTube. What weight of yarn? Yeah. About yay. (laughs) About about that. Isn't that how Um, the weights of the cloth are measured, though? No, no, it's... it's, No, that's per... Yeah. That's per, like, square... Yeah, that's per square... You're per per double width yard. Okay. Um, That's the ounce. There's also grams per meter squared which some companies use as well. But again, that's for finished things. Okay. I'm okay. not sure. I'm not even going to BS um, the answer. I honestly don't know weights of yarns. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, don't, we don't buy yarn. No, yeah. we, we buy finished cloth. We rely on weavers to know their stuff. Mm-hmm. We know our stuff. Um, at least we pretend to. I was, Yeah, I would have to say... Um, yeah, I don't know either, but I would guess basically you're talking something as fine and tight as you can get it. If you're actually weaving, um, uh, like on, on a wheel, uh, you know, with a, with, a, with a mechanically certain, you know, consistency, because you don't always get as much consistency with uh, drop spindle spinning like my, my wife does. I think they're buying but, the yarn though. They're not we. They're, they're not spinning the yarn. The yarn. Okay, they're okay. buying the yarn and then they're it's, weaving it's it gonna themselves. Be, it's going to be the tightest, finest stuff I think you could find if you're talking about wool yarn. I mean, you're not talking sock yarn. You're not talking sweater yarn. You're not talking anything fuzzy. You're talking something really, really... It's tight. It's not it's necessarily fine, but it's tight. Yeah. Um, I'd say this. Um, send an email to sales at usakilts.com if you actually want to know the answer. Send an email to sales at USA Kilts and uh, tell tell them to forward it to me, and I'll ask the mills what you know what we know, yeah, we know weight people. of yarn. Yeah, I know where to get the answer. I don't know the answer, but I know where to get it. Yeah. What's that? Uh, Einstein, never know a fact where you or never know a thing where you know the answer where to get it. He has a good quote sure. about that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't Indeed. think it's something you're gonna buy in a yarn store. No. That's kind of what I'm thinking. No, 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 yeah, no, no. It's gonna have no. to be. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to know the answer as long as you know where to get the answer. Mm-hmm. Bam! Mm-hmm. Just Google it. Um, nowadays, anyway. Uh, right. Mr. Eric. Okay. That's why so many things fall out of my brain. I don't have to remember them. Brain, brain. What is brain? Um, I'm gonna, have to I'm gonna give you a, a, an easy one because Ian was mean to us. So, uh, Danny uh, Anhalt. Danny Anhalt. Uh, very simple question. Uh, Danny Anhalt asked, "How can a larger guy wear a dress sporn?" Uh, and I'm assuming he's saying, and have it look good. Uh, he's saying, do I need to use hangers? Yeah, if you're if you're a larger gent and you want to wear a dress sporn, you have effectively you know, three options: is a sporn chain, uh, which you know the normal chain that you wear around you. You have a sporn strap, which is just a leather strap 
again, goes all the way around you and holds the sporn up, right. or sporn hangers. The, the issue with sporn hangers with the dress sporn is you have to wear a belt for sporn hangers to work. The issue with not wearing sporn hangers when you're a big dude is if you wear a sporn strap or a sporn chain, and the sporn kind of, and you have you know, the, the, the front goes out and then tucks under, the sporn chain kind of tends to underline the belly and it's a bit disheveled looking. So that is the one instance where I'd say a, a, uh, a kilt belt with a dress sporn can be okay, is if you're wearing the sporn hangers to hold the belt up, or to, on the belt to hold the sporn, um, it'll be, uh, it's one of those where it's, it's a difficult one because neither one is great, but it's which is the lesser of two evils. And in my mind, pairing the belt with the sporn, with the dress sporn is gonna be better with the sporn hangers than underlining the sporn or underlining your belly. And then every time you sit down and get up and sit down and get up, you have this like, you know, squished up, you know, material sticking out right yeah. over top of the sporn. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, um, I, I think it's intelligent intelligent of him to bring up the question in terms of a dress sporn because um, a regular day sporn hangs a little bit differently than a, a dress sporn because it's not as top heavy. It doesn't have the the overarching material above the the line of the chain, um, and that top top material is made out of metal. So yeah, it, it tends to it tends to flop forward more and dip just, forward. Yeah, it dips, yeah. and 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 the unfortunate uh, thing that can happen is it dips forward and and pushes back between your legs. So it's also disrupting the the, the shape of the apron. So you're getting this divot in your apron, you know, between your legs, which doesn't look very good. Um, I was gonna say if you can commit to making sure you keep a vest on the entire time. You could almost, and I think I would actually recommend this, um, you could use a, hear me out, hear me out, use a regular belt instead of a kilt belt because the buckle will not be an issue. It will not be a big, proud standing big buckle that's gonna disrupt the look of the vest. Like I always say, I don't like the buckle disrupting the shape of the vest. And it will be lighter, lighter, thinner, and its only purpose is to keep those hangers in place and keep the sporn at the height you want it at in front. That's if you can guarantee you'll keep the vest on and closed the entire time. If you think you're going to wind up being too hot or something, uh, and stripping off the layers at the, during the reception, if it's a you know like it's a wedding, um, then go with a kilt belt. But use a lighter buckle, use a thinner, lighter buckle again, so it doesn't disrupt the the shape of your jacket and the vest. The profile, yeah. The profile. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that would be my minor hack for it to make the hangers and belt less obtrusive. I will go. I will. I will take your hack and raise you one. The um, two things. Of hacking. Okay. <clears throat> um, one, make sure when you're wearing it that uh, whether it's a kilt belt or a regular belt, that you're wearing that belt snug so it does not mm. move mm. over time. As you're walking around, especially if you're a like if you're squishy here like me, um, you have to wear it snug so that it doesn't just kind of you know dip down and then the sporn is down here and the belt's down there and it, you just look a dog's dinner. Um, the other, the other hack I have for you, if you do want to try this, this is great for big guys. Um, if you do want to wear a sporn chain with a dress sporn, put the sporn chain on, put the, you know, put the sporn on, put the sporn chain, everything. Um, and then take the side over here where your sporn chain comes around the side and hook it over top of the top buckle on your right, right. side and your left side. Right. Forget the belt, just hook that over top of there. That way it's hanging down from the sides of your body, not from the center of your back down all the way around. Therefore, it will you won't get that material bunching up on top of the sporn as much and it will stay higher on your body a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think you want that. You, you're kind of trying to wear the sporn a little higher than other yeah. guys might. Yeah, if you're, yeah, if you're a bigger dude, it may help to wear your sporn a touch higher um, so if you do have a big belly that comes out in front, it doesn't do, like Eric said, it dipping back and under right. with, the, with the cantle kind of pushing the weight forward. If you wear a little bit higher on the flat part or the, or the slight slope of the belly, it's not going to be as big of an issue. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hope Good that luck. helps. Mr. Ian, who do we got coming up next? Uh, we've got Joseph Marrow from YouTube. He wants to know, what would you recommend a piper get for their first outfit of Highland wear? Everything, top to bottom, <laughs> two of everything, especially just, if the band's paying for it. Give us your credit card. Exactly. <laughs> um, are we talking, I'm, I'm going to assume we're talking like a solo gig. 
kind of an outfit as opposed to because he's part of a band. That was what I was hoping you'd address. He did not specify in any okay. way, but okay. certainly that'd be part of my answer would okay. be if he's in a band, you need to... If you're still there, type in a thing, whether you're in a band or whether you're just solo. Let's assume he's going to be solo. I was going to say, let's go solo. And if it's yeah. in a band, then say something different. You want to make a million bucks piping for weddings as a, as a wedding piper. Exactly. So how do you make yourself look awesome? <clears throat> um... Uh, start with a kilt. Always start with a kilt. That's the the the, the, the base of the outfit. Um, I would say, if you're if you're planning on piping, you know, summer as well as winter, let's let's try to give them the best sure. all round for everything. Um, kilt, get the best that you can afford. Um, you don't want to have to upgrade your kilt later on, um, so you want to get the best one that you can afford. Don't mortgage your house, but get the best one you can afford. If that's a five yard wool kilt. Great. If that's a top of the line eight yard wool kilt, great. If that's only a semi trad, great, fine. Mm -hmm. But I'd say generally start with semi trad if you're buying from us. Start with a semi trad or above. Um, I would get a pair of hose that tone with the kilt. Um, if you're gonna get a jacket and vest, I would I'd stay away from Prince Charlie's. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. an Argyle or a Piper Flex Piper jacket Flex. and vest. I would do the Piper Flex. Yeah. Um, or a tweed jacket and vest. Mm -hmm. They look great for fall and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would specifically get the jacket and vest so that you can, in the summertime, wear the vest by itself or the jacket by itself or that kind of thing. And you have a little bit of heat fluctuation for mm -hmm. your you know, for your body temperature. Mm -hmm. um, hose, you could either match to a color in the kilt or tone with a color in the kilt, or you can tone it with the jacket. So if you get a tweed, you know, a, 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 t a brown tweed jacket you can get brown hose or a green tweed jacket get green hose Ian I have the follow up you asked for from, from Joseph Marrow he says I'm moving shortly and won't be part of a band I've only just started practicing with the band regularly opposed to as with a one on one teacher so I haven't gotten anything yet okay 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 um, Sporin you're gonna get most use out of either a day Sporin a hunting Sporin a Piper's hunting Sporin which has the metal cantle on top um, I don't like him. You don't like him? I don't like him. It's it's popular with the pipe band. I know, I know. The, it it um, serves a ten foot rule for for looking right. It I looks think. it looks fancy, but it doesn't drum. Exactly. So it's it's got you know the best of both worlds ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hunting sporins or a sporin with no tassels means there's no tassels drumming as you walk around. Right. So I'd say you don't need to get a dress sporin. You don't need to get a horsehair sporin. Anything like that. You just want to have a nice, well put together outfit. Um, mm -hmm. If you're buying from us and you're getting a tweed jacket, you can get what we call a Piper Cut, um, where it's it's cut, the armholes are a little bit higher, it's a little bit wider in the half back, um, so that you can actually maneuver and put your arm up a little bit better mm -hmm. while you're piping. Mm -hmm. um, gives you a little bit more range of motion without looking odd for a jacket and vest, for like right. a, a dress jacket and vest. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the Piper Flex jacket is essentially that kind of, tech, that kind of cut uh, they also put a um, a lycra wool blend in the back panel so that your your shoulder blades and everything can, can flex better to play. And the most noticeable difference um, is that uh, Piper's jackets will have a two buttons with a chain between them, so that the jacket can be closed-ish and not be flopping around while you're playing. Um, typically in Highland wear, men will not close their jackets, but Pipers are sort of the exception because when you're playing, you don't want the, the jacket flopping up and looking awkward as yeah, your arms when you're, are moving. Yeah, when your yeah. arm's up. So so having this this little chain assembly helps that a lot. And that is available for either a Piper Cut Argyle of any kind, Tweed or Barathea or whatever, or on the Piper Flex, which is the only difference really is just that back fabric, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, black is probably what I would recommend going with first because they'll work for day or evening occasions. You're going to be possibly piping for it could be for parties, it could be for pubs, but very often it's going to be for weddings or for funerals. So the black is your friend for all of those occasions. Um, it's easier to start simple and go up to something with a bit more personality in terms of tweed and day wear, as opposed to having only like a green tweed vest and they want everything somber for a funeral. So yeah. that's what I would recommend. And I would also say this, the majority of people who are probably, I'm extrapolating, the majority of people who are probably going to want to hire a piper are going to be for weddings or funerals. Yeah. So they're going to expect a black jacket and vest. Right. Um, <clears throat> I've said this before, and this is my business brain. I'll say it again. I think that pipers should have 
two kilts in two different colors and two different jackets hmm. and then allow brides slash whoever to be able to choose your mm -hmm. look yep. for the event. If I am a piper and I say that to, let's say, let's say the a bride and groom come to you and they want to rent you or, you know, hire you for a service. Um, if you are in competition with two or three other bagpipers and you say to them, well, you know, which would you like, you know, what are your wedding colors? Would you like me to wear my, my, my green jacket? If that blends with the wedding better or this particular tartan kilt, or would you like me to wear a black with this more somber kilt? What would you like me to wear? And you're giving them that option. There's going to be some, Oh, we have options. And then if somebody else doesn't do that and they don't have other outfits, it, you set yourself apart a little bit. Yeah. Outside of the quality of your playing, obviously, which should be the first thing <laughs> oh, you good. worry about. He's but, awesome. You never heard him? Exactly. Um, yeah, I obviously this can add up. So if you're trying to keep it on a budget, then yeah, go for the go for something like the the five yard or the semi tried kilt, um, and just the vest. If you absolutely have to, just get the black argyle vest and invest in a good dress shirt from someplace. Um, if you can do more of it at once, so you can get, I guess I, other other retailers will offer discounts for packages too. I don't know if we're the only ones, but we do that. So you can save some money if you get things together. But the, um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say a semi-dress or a hunting swarm would be my choice. Um, preferably something with the leaves. Leaves being like I'm wearing today. You know, no, nothing of drums like what Rocky has. Mm -hmm. um, for brogues, do you think you should invest in the Piper brogues? Or will any comfortable dress shoe <clears throat> be okay? I would say if you're going to be walking a lot in them. The Piper Brogues, the main difference is the the, uh, the insole is a little bit more squishy, a little, mm -hmm. little bit more padding, and the bottom is a, a more, it's rubber, a little bit thicker rubber, um, it has a heel cleat on it, so yeah. it's it's designed for marching. It's designed for pipe bands to use marching, you know, up and down on parades. Um, so it's going to be better if you are going to be marching with the pipe band. If your pipe band that you're joining or that you're going to be joining or whatever. Um, if they wear spats, then don't worry about it. If they wear it, or get whatever you want to get at that point for your solo gigs. Um, but if they wear ghillie brogues, then yeah, you might want to consider the Piper's brogues. They're going to be a little bit more expensive, but if you want something a little bit more basic, there are simpler, less expensive ghillie brogue options out there. If you want to forget it all together and just wear a pair of wingtips, you can do that too. Yeah, I would almost say um, if you need to, go for the nice, plain black, comfortable dress shoes and don't worry about the ghillie brogues yet until you can afford a really good pair. The one thing I think you should get, which is affordable and I think is very much expected from Pipers nine times out of ten, is some sort of a head covering. Um, you should have a Glengarry, possibly a Balmoral, but the Glengar Glengarry is more standard. Um, it's a little detail, it just makes you look official. Um, it's not technically necessary, but it's like you look... You look you're like you're the piper. You're the piper yeah. that way. Yes. So. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I would say like, you know they don't have to be more than forty bucks. So. No. Right. Uh, 50? Fifty. Fifty-ish. Yeah. Point is, it's worth investing, and in. it's yeah. a simple enough accessory. So. Exactly. It's not gonna. It's gonna. It's it's not cheap, but it's not gonna break the bank. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There are certain things you can, and keep in mind with any of this, you can build the outfit. Like he said, if you want to start right. with a vest, right. And the kilt and a sporin, hose, flashes, um, and a belt and buckle. That's fine. You can get away with that for piping slightly more casual gigs. Then you get into you add the jacket and vest, or you add the jacket later on, and right. you can add the Glengarry later on. You can add a second kilt later on. You build on your outfit to keep the cost down until you start making money on it. Like right. it's it's a cool hobby, and ideally it's going to start making you money. So you just mm -hmm. reinvest in your kit as you kind of go along. And you can't. I think you can do a tax write up if you have it as a home business, right? If you're, if you're declaring that it is a business, yeah, okay. <clears throat> if this is like, you know, right, hey, right, pay right. me in cash and this, yeah. you know, then yeah. you know, here's then a, you can't exactly write it off for you, kid. All right, <laughs> okay. Pay me in scotch. <laughs> well, they, you're supposed to though. Yes, you're absolutely. Pay the piper. To, you're supposed to pay the piper, and yep. if you're curious about that tradition, it's on our wedding guide on the website. But yeah, the whole pay the piper thing is actually a bagpiping thing, and you should absolutely insist on it because it's awesome. In free scotch is always awesome. Free scotch is good. Yeah, yeah. indeed. It's good luck. Um, my turn, right? Sure. Okay. All right, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is an interesting one. Jesse McDowell 
uh, was saying, if I were to go waiting in a PV kilt, specifically Polyvisco, so we don't have to worry about addressing a wool kilt in this situation, waiting in a PV kilt in fresh water or salt water, what is the best way to clean the kilt, and what damage should I possibly expect if I do this? Could I even go so far as to use a PV kilt as a swimsuit in fresh or salt water? Now, the reason he got into this, by the way, this is not like just off the top of his head, he's a fly fisherman. So he wants to wear a kilt yep. um, when he's doing fly fishing, and he knows that he's going to at least get the bottom of the kilt wet. The rest yeah. of the stuff, I think he's just like, hey, that'd be cool. But uh, what would you recommend for water and kilts? And I do have an illustrative aid for this. Sure. Um, <clears throat> for fly fishing in a kilt, if the bottom edge is going to get wet, the only uh, A, he said PV. So yes, I would say PV. Um, potentially not wool. For one specific reason well and even pv you're running a little bit of risk of this hmm. is if the bottom edge of it gets wet it may it's it's never happened to me but i know people who have complained about it it will cut at the back of your knee yeah that sensitive skin on the back of your mm -hmm. knee if mm -hmm. your kilt is wet especially if it's wool and you're walking and you have to walk to the fishing hole let's say um and it's swishing and you know slapping at the back of your knees on that sensitive skin you can kind of uh, there's been, you know, Getting cases. Of, yeah, there's been cases of people bleeding from the back of the legs. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's gonna going to be an issue with PV. With PV, I don't think it would be. It can still be an irritant, but I don't think it would right. actually like I would agree with saw that. at your legs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it. They're meant to take abuse. That's the that's the the joy of PV. Yeah, is it's Teflon coated. You know, you muck it up. We've had guys run. You know, mud races and you know Spartan races and all kinds of like, jumping over, you know, yeah. crazy things with it, and just throw it in the washer and you boom, you're done. Bob's your uncle. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but for wool, I would be leery of it. No, now don't for do it at all with wool. Yeah, for swimming. Mm -hmm. Um, is that where your uh, yeah your see, image comes in? I, I think I, there's two an there's two parts of the answer to this, if I recall. What we dun, talked dun, about. Done. Done. Okay. Um, from a practical level. The kilt will probably be fine even in salt water, and here is the proof. This is our good friend Captain Ron of Captain Ron's Diving, and he asked us to make him a polyviscose kilt that he could wear as a promotional thing. He doesn't go do this all the time, but to promote his business, he wanted to be able to dive in a kilt uh, just, to, just to drive home the Celtic style of his business. Um, and yeah, so we actually made him a polyviscose kilt that he has taken scuba diving. So the kilt's gonna be okay. PV kilt is gonna be okay. I don't think we don't have any evidence that salt water damages that fabric at all. Yeah. No. I mean, it might get crusty if you leave it. If you leave it on, yeah, right. You know, Ian's laughing over here. If you, like you leave salt it, salt stains in it or something. Yeah, it's like, it's that, like you yeah. want to wash it after you're done. Right. <laughs> right. Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you shake it out and like an salt. octopus comes out of your kilt. <laughs> Oops, sorry. But... Yep. Yep. Yeah, but but stylistically or or behavior wise, I think was where you were you had some thoughts. Yeah, the uh, uh, the only thing my concern with wearing a kilt for swimming, so to speak, um, what are you going to wear under it? A, a a a pair of swim trunks is you know is is bifurcated, so you're you're you know not flashing your junk there with little kids in the pool, um, or it has the little you know the little liner thing that goes in a kilt or in a. Uh, uh, Excuse me, in a swim truck. Not like the mesh, <clears throat> correct mesh thing. Yeah. So if you're wearing a kilt, um, a what you're gonna like? Let's say you're you're gonna walk from the shallow end, you know, into the water. The the kilt will essentially float for a <laughs> second or two. <laughs> is it the visual the same? No, the my visual for my first visual is of a guy cannonballing into the pool. He has like oh, cannonballing, and the kilt goes woof. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids with snorkel masks. Ah, I'm blind. <laughs> mommy, mommy, don't let the orca get me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No, the um. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. It's broke in. Exactly. <laughs> the, the no, but it's Monroe. yeah. It is. Yeah, you're gonna do a Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. It's gonna be a yeah. Marilyn Monroe underwater. It's gonna. Be... Yeah. You're gonna look at freaking tartan jellyfish now, you know, if with, you're... with the tentacles lying you know, down below. So. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> the tentacle got me. <laughs> I, uh, I don't yes. think swimming. I, I think no. I think having a swim a kilt as a beach wrap kind of a thing, and we know people have done this. Like you have it, you have your casual kilt, your polyviscose kilt, whatever, 
and you wear it to and from the edge of the water. And you have your swim trunks or whatever, and it's just something fun to put on. That's how sport kilt started. Was mm-hmm. they were mm-hmm. a psych? They were for they were cyclists, and they wanted something to change in and out of their stuff. Right. And they would just a a wrap around more than a beach towel, less than a real kilt, and they would just wrap it around. Boom, you know, change okay. out of your bike shorts. Done. It was a fun little thing, and you know they started off doing it that way. Mm. But the uh, yeah, if you're not wearing underwear, bloop, it's gonna go up. Obviously, if you are wearing underwear, you're gonna have soaked freaking underwear walking around, you know, with, yeah. with chafed thighs from wet, soaking wet underwear. Oh lord! Um, I wouldn't do it, except as a gag, if I was gonna change right out of it. You better know your audience if you're gonna do that as a gag. I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. That that cannonball image is still getting me. It's like ah, but the um. I'm imagining like off the high dive and the wind takes. Right. It up. That's what I mean. Uh. That's what I mean. It's just, woof. It's just like. It's like those paratrooper yeah. toys he had as a kid, but not fun. <laughs> What's that? You that know? Scottish meme? The uh, Scottish paratroopers. Scottish paratroopers. The guys yep. just had their eyes covered. Yes. Yes. Yep. I actually have that image somewhere. Yep. Um. But yeah, a polyviscose fabric is gonna be fine. If you want to wear it fly fishing, go for it. It's a, you, you're going to enjoy having it out in the wilderness for other reasons. Like, we talk about kilts as a good thing for hiking. So, getting to and from where you're going to be doing the fishing and, and all that, sure. Yeah. I would not recommend going swimming in a kilt. But no. like a kilt getting wet because you're out in a, in a stream or something, fine. Indeed. Yeah. All right, Mr. Ian, who do we have next? Oh, that's a good question. I appear to have lost the name of the person. I apologize to whoever this oh. was. but Oh, how um, dare you, sir? As a Mac, wedding, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm off the show. Mac wouldn't have done that. <laughs> As a wedding guest, would you recommend a Prince Charlie jacket and vest or an Argyle jacket and vest? And would a white shirt be strictly necessary or any shirt that goes with the plaid of the kilt? I think I know how I'd answer this one, but go ahead. Um, Two way wedding, um, it, unless it specifies on the invitation black tie, then Argyle is fine. It's more than enough. Um, shirt wise, you know, do not wear the, the, the tuxedo t-shirt, maybe not quite that casual. Um, but a white tie or a white shirt is not necessarily if you have a, a blue <clears throat> dress shirt, or if you have a peach colored dress shirt or whatever, that's fine. You can absolutely do that. Um, it doesn't have to match with the kilt. It can, if you want to do that, um, white is fine. Um, a, even a, a tattersall shirt would be okay if you're wearing a tweed jacket and vest and that kind of thing. But yeah, I w- I'd say don't overthink it. It should be a dress shirt, but don't overthink it. Yeah, I would say um, the goal is to look sharp and civilized and gentlemanly without upstaging the wedding party. If you're in the wedding party, then obviously you're going to follow suit with whatever they've decided to do. Um, if it is a high, high, high formal white tie evening wedding in a cathedral with aristocracy then sure do a pc otherwise an argyle is uh, a black argyle let's assume you're talking about the standard bog standard black Ar- argyle um will look fine and chances are you will not be at risk of upstaging the wedding party um i think a, a a colored shirt to tone with the tartan would be fine you know just play with the outfit however else you want at that point and just make sure you're not going to look fancier than anybody who's getting married yeah that's the bottom line Yep. Take your take your notes from them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If there's any chance, you know, like if recommendations from somebody who you know in the wedding party is always good if you can get it. Um, you can't always. But yeah. Indeed. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Eric. Okay. That was a fast one. I hope it helped. Yeah. Okay. John Jonathan Leon. Leon. When getting in the car. While wearing a kilt, I've noticed that it is difficult to get into the car and keep my kilt from getting all bunched up in the seat. Is there a better way of getting in the car so I'm not sitting on a bunched up kilt? I think he's worried about his pleats getting wrinkled. This is kind of a classic. <coughs> definitely yeah. definitely good advice for anybody. If you're, if you're in a car with leather seats, it's less of a problem. At that point, what I would do for leather seats specifically, just kind of do the old sweep and sit. So, you know, you back up to the car, you sweep your pleats, you hold, kind of hold them down towards the back of your knee, you back in, you turn. I haven't found that much of a problem with that. If you have cloth seats, that's where the real bugaboo hits. Um, my hack for that, a beach towel. 
get a beach towel, leave it in your car if you're gonna be wearing a kilt or bring it with you, you know, if you're gonna be wearing a kilt. And when you're about to get in the car, wrap the towel around you. So around the kilt and everything entirely, just around you. Then get into the car, sit, you know, scoot your way in, turn 90 degrees, and then put the, uh, put the edges of the beach towel down to the side, flop, boom. Yeah. You're done. It is it is just as it was when you were standing. Then arrive at your destination, get out the car, boom, done. Um, leave the beach towel in the car. Then when you come back out, repeat. Right. It's easy. Yep. yep. I think uh, for me, it's always been a question of uh, choosing your battles. I mean, there's some days where I'm not going to care about it. But there are other days where I want to look really sharp when I get to my destination. Uh, uh, and so it's worth doing. It depends on the length of the car ride. Also, if you're going to be in the car for like 15 minutes, it's probably not going to matter. The, the any wrinkles you get are going to you know ease out. out. Yep. If you're driving for hours, then it's worth considering doing. Um, the bunching up thing. I'm on second thought. He may have been talking about simply the comfort of it. In which case, sure, the towel the towel trick works for that too. Yep. He's worried about you know if you feeling like the kilt is bunching in and, and making his legs uncomfortable or something. Do you but, have cloth seats in your car or leather? Excuse me. Um, we have like faux leather in one car, and we have cloth in another. Okay. Do you so, find it as an issue, or Ian, you can you can answer this as well. Do you find an issue if you are? Um, do you have cloth seats in your car or leather? Uh, doesn't easily fit into that binary situation. It's leather mm -hmm. around the edges. It's got like a mesh in the okay. main butt area. But it, it's it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. slick. It's not going to grab At the edges. Fabric. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it? Does it? bunch up under you when you're in the car or no tends not to for me i will say one thing i haven't specifically heard you guys hit on is i would say the action of getting into the car really any chair uh when you're wearing a kilt it's more of a falling into action than i typically used to do i find i still do it even when i do wear pants on occasion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. i definitely fall into chairs more at letting the you know the natural you know action against the the mm -hmm. hopefully slick like the, the chair scoot thing yeah yeah i think it also does help that at least uh the three of us we all drive at least medium to larger type vehicles i think it, it's easier to get in. if you have a, a small a car especially if it's a small car and you have a really long way to fall you might you know smack the back of your head <laughs> against the door frame uh, i drive a small suv so it's pretty easy for me to kind of step in and allow that falling action to push the pleats um Where you but want. it's just yeah. it's something you have to get used to for sure it's first yeah. time is always going to be awkward yeah <laughs> there's also the 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 if you're if you have cloth seats you know it's I would, I would put, if I'm in a sports car, you know, a Mazda Miata with cloth seats for some reason, um, and you put your feet all the way out, you can kind of like, you know, scoot your hand and just, you know, underneath you and kind of even mm -hmm. it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's other hacks to just get around it a touch. I've done that but, even with, even with the, the faux leather seats, yeah. I've done that. Just like the, 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 the slide sweep kind of like with the back of the hand. Yes. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Sweep the pleats. Sweep the pleats. Sweep the pleats. Yep. Insert meme here. Sweep the pleats. You have a problem with that? No, Rocky. No wrinkles. Um, or video, whatever we did there for that thing. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's the, the towel method. If you're specifically going to somewhere where you want to be nice, crisp, neat, clean, when you get there, towel method by far, I haven't found any better method to this date. Mm -hmm. And I'm old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not bad, old. All right. Enough. I think I'm like 96 by now. It's not the years, it's the mileage. Exactly. I'm a 25-year-old uh, trapped in an 86-year-old's body. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Miss, is that you now, Mr. Ian, or is that That's her? Ian's turn now. Mr. Ian. So I'd say now would actually be a pretty good time to address the Kilted Ambassador segment that we like to do around the middle of the show. Ooh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am beyond help. I am beyond help. Um, our kilted ambassador this time around, ladies and gentlemen, is the incomparable Jonathan Hole Kennedy. Jonathan is a school teacher, public school, secondary school in Massachusetts, and he has been for some time. He's done uh, engineering and earth sciences and things like that. Uh, he has been uh, a folk music musician, Irish folk music, he and his wife since at least the 1990s. Uh, grew up with his mom playing piano, and then in the 90s he fell in love with basically Ullian pipes and playing the boron. He started on boron. 
And uh, this is actually how he met his wife, which is a, a, a mm. thing I remember from talking to him, that they actually met because she was a fiddle player, as I recall. So they met uh, through music. The power of music brought them together. Now, basically, the other passion in Jonathan's life is Gaelic, Irish Gaelic. He and his wife are both Gaelic speakers, and they uh, got into that uh, back in the early 2000s and um, uh, started learning. He started learning from a local instructor in, in the States, and, but it got to be such a passion. He found more and more teachers, and it got to be such a thing that people started encouraging him and his wife to go to Ireland to learn formally. They went and studied at the National University of Ireland in Galway and uh, came away from it with uh, master's degrees in Irish Gaelic after uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, as he puts it. And now they both teach at uh, local schools and uh, universities in their area. They have a website uh, for the uh, where you can contact them about Gaelic lessons. I think uh, we had the we had the URL for that uh, that we could show on screen. I think, um, and we had uh, uh, the result of this is that his high school where he teaches <clears throat> is the only school in the Western Hemisphere that actually offers Gaelic as a credit worthy course in the course catalog. So you can actually be a student at mm -hmm. the high school and take Gaelic. Um, which is unheard of, you know, for, for most of yeah. us, like it's Spanish or German or, <clears throat> or you know, whatever. Um, so that's basically on, on, a, on a personal level, that's Jonathan. As for kilts, some of you may know him as the guy who wears the great kilts casually um, and posts photos about it in the kilts and culture group. Uh, Jonathan uh, is in love with a kilt from a practical standpoint. Um, he likes to try and emulate how it might have been worn by common people back in the day, meaning like, you know, 16th through 18th century. Um, and so he's he's been fascinated with uh, the great kilt and wearing that and how to adapt that to modern life, uh, although he doesn't wear it teaching. It's basically casual wear. <laughs> um, and uh, more recently, he's interested in um, uh, the filibag, like the, the minimally tailored, minimally sewn uh, little kilt from the 18th century. Okay. Um, his philosophy is basically, <clears throat> I've always been interested in the connections between people and the natural environment and how people adapt successfully to the natural world around them. And so that's what's led to him doing a lot of the exp experimentation he's done fashion-wise with kilts. And it's been a, a huge benefit to the community, I think. It's gotten a lot of people into using great kilts and stuff yeah. for fun. Um, he, it's funny because <clears throat> he, he didn't think he was going to get into kilts originally because he doesn't have any direct Scottish connection. Um, but uh, and he started he played with a he got like a utility kilts mocker back in the day okay. wore it a couple times didn't like it <laughs> left it in the closet and then uh, he and his wife uh, sometime later were playing at a, a friend's wedding uh, in Ireland I believe but they were Scottish or it was a Scottish wedding he said everybody at the wedding was in a kilt he was the only guy in pants and and one of his friends afterwards was like hey why don't you wear a kilt you should try wearing a kilt and he's like well I don't have any Scottish in me and this guy who was a Scotsman said to him well, you know, you don't have to be American to wear denim. And you don't have to be from Spain to speak Spanish. You could wear a kilt if you want to. And he's like, huh, okay, okay. And then he came back home to Massachusetts with the hot, humid summers here. And he thought, you know what? Kilts are probably actually a really good idea for the environment. So he started off with uh, modern utility kilts and evolved into doing the traditional thing from there. Nice. So his advice to newbies, which I which I really like. This is, this is very good advice. Um... Number one, benefit from the community, whether it's online or in person. Go and check out other people's outfits and then decide what you like from what they wear and adopt it. Basically, decide what rocks your world because there's lots of examples. Um, become familiar with the kilt, its tradition and cultural background. Then once you have a grasp of all that, then accept or reject the parts that you don't like. Get to know the whole thing first and then make your selections based yep. on that knowledge. Um... You know, just enjoy making yourself look good. <clears throat> he said it's for him. It's been a constant confidence booster. He loves the reactions he gets from people when he's wearing a kilt. He considers himself kind of a, a, a shyer person, actually. Um, and so he really likes the fact that people will chat with him, yeah. even people he doesn't know. Um, you know, so he says, "Don't be shy because you're going to get attention." Um, he says, "As far as rude comments are concerned, you got to be the adult in the room." You know, even if somebody says something rude like, "Hey, buddy, nice skirt," just kind of like, "Hey, thanks," blow it off, move on. And, and finally, um, yeah, he said basically, you know, the, he, he loves the compliments he gets. Like, uh, he said one of the funniest compliments he ever got was in a, a supermarket, and some big metal dude from across the way was like, Whoa, that was the most metal thing ever! Yeah, and he was like, Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you, neighbor. You know, so 
<clears throat> There's um, something extremely disarming when someone tries to insult you and you thank them. It's, yes. Nice yes. good, buddy. Thanks. Yeah. And you just stare at them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just or, or you give them the deflate, crazy eyes, like, thanks! Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you'd notice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing later? I did you know. it for you. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, the, the part of his story that kind of sticks out to me is the uh, uh, the fact, the, the origin of it, the the fact that the, mm -hmm. I didn't know that about him, that the the, yeah. uh, the Scottish guy is say, basically saying like, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to be an American to wear jeans or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That, to me, speaks volumes, A, of Scotland, B, of uh, to to the the concerns, the fears that a lot of Americans have when they first, especially Americans, Canadians, Australians, whatever, um, non Scots, the first time they want to wear a kilt, it's the oh, oh, is this cultural appropriation? Should I not wear this? It's like right. no, right. for the ma the majority, the vast majority of Scots that we know, personally or business related, don't care, don't mind. They think it's awesome. It's just part of who you are, part of what you do and you, mm -hmm. you getting out and just mm -hmm. experiencing a different culture, experiencing your own heritage and yeah. living with it and keeping it alive and keeping it moving forward. Um, there Will there be jerks? Yes. Will there be gatekeepers who say, well, you're not Scottish. You're not allowed. You know what? I, eh, give them some of that. Well, bless their hearts. Yes. Bless their hearts, as Kurt Kinnaman would say. Yeah. Um, but... It's. It, I. I love the fact that so many people love the fact that we're wearing kilts. Yeah. It's. It's heartening. And I think. Um. I mean, and Jonathan, if you're watching, I don't know if you. I would assume you've gotten the same reaction, but I've seen a lot of people react very positively to what he's done with the great kilt. It is. It, we've. We've seen a, a huge escalation in great kilt sales, and it's just become a much more popular thing because people have found a way to integrate it uh, into daily life, not just like going to rent fairs and stuff. And. Uh, I admire, Jonathan, I really admire you. I admire his his scientific approach to this, that, that form follows function. And he said that basically, you know, all the trimmings and all the stuff, and especially like the military styles and decorations that we think of, the elements of the, of, the, of the Highland costume came later. At some point back in time, this was just a thing that a guy going out to live his daily life in the boonies was wearing. So what was that like? How was that something that worked for him? So everything he's done has been to try and emulate that. And I think that's awesome. It's primal. And you'll hear me say primal a lot on this show, but I think it's, a, I think it's important. Yeah. So. I want to go back to one other thing I said. I want, to, I want to toast to Jonathan before we get too oh, far off. So. sorry. Thank you, Jonathan, Jonathan, for being you. Absolutely. Keep on keeping on. The, the one thing I've noticed, it, it literally just occurred to me. Um, when you're wearing a kilt, the people's reactions, people are afraid of negative reactions. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't generally get negative. You will get People who love it, which are frankly going to be 90% of the people. Yeah. You'll get 10% of people trying to, especially your friends. You know, if you're a guy in your 20s, your guys are going to, your buddies are going to rib you. Of course they are. You're doing something different. Right. That's fine. Or you'll get the, the, the truckload of passing kids screaming, oh, nice skirt. Who cares? Their opinions don't matter. You don't actually get negative reactions. You get people who are trying to get a rise out of you, or you get people who love it. You don't have people angry about it. You don't have people mm. who are, it's, they're, they're generally positive reactions or just jerky kind of reactions. I think the, I think the, the middle ground is sometimes you just get confusion. Confusion is it's, the closest thing to a negative reaction that yeah, I would get. Yeah, you it's know like what, I mean? what, what? what? Like and that's you, where that's where you, you don't get the, fit in a box. I right, have certain right, boxes for right. things, and you're not in one. And that's where you get the. Are you in a band, or is there a parade? You know, they don't. If they recognize you know. that it's a kilt, or just the like, what are you wearing and why? Mm -hmm. Like confusion. But yeah. it's even then, it's generally not negative. It's just confusion. Right. Right. A little, little breakthrough, a little mental breakthrough there on the on there the episode go. today. There you go. Nice. Right on. Indeed. So, Any input from you, Ian? You look well, like you had something to say. Yeah, I was just going to add, uh, I'd like to shout out, we've got a lot of people sharing their examples or their stories of what they've done in similar situations, but in particular, cool. I wanted to share a comment from Greg Lyons on Facebook. 
He says, my nine-year-old shuts people down when they call my kilt a skirt. And I know my nine-year-old daughter actually does the same thing for me. So I think, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think the official USA Kilt recommendation is bring a nine-year-old with you as protection <laughs> everywhere you go when you wear a kilt. We have a rental program. Yes. If you, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a nine-year-old, talk to family. Talk to friends. Somebody's got to have a nine-year-old. We'll, right? we'll, we'll take them out of production. Right. It's, right. it's child labor. Right. It's fun. Right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Cut that out from the final edit, guys. Okay, we can take the chains off for the day. They can go exactly. Off. Sure, sure. No, oh, it's yeah. true. I think, I, yeah. I mean, and that's. Uh, I've told this story before. So I think the, the the first time I wore a kilt, I had my wife and my infant daughter with me, and that helped take the edge off of my initial insecurity about doing it for the first time. I was like, I'm not alone. I got my posse here. It's my wife and my kid, but yeah, you know, I got it, it'll do for a posse today, and and it helped. You know, so it is it is worth having allies of any form. I'm picturing but. your infant daughter with brass knuckles and a broken bottle just ready to go. I, that wouldn't be her style. Brass knuckles, maybe. Broken bottle, I don't think so. Ah, <clears throat> oh, fair enough. All right. Yeah. <laughs> She's a rapier girl. She's a fencer. So. All right, Mr. Switch Ian. Switchblade, so switchblade. Yeah. yeah, or butterfly knife. Bro yes, <laughs> that, yes, yes, that would be her style. Oh, I love butterfly knives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So this what is, do we got next? This is a question we've addressed many times before, but we have a lot of people commenting. This is their first time ever joining us for a live stream, so maybe it's worth revisiting. Thank you for coming. Yes. Um, this in particular comes from Harold Chill Connell, a.k.a. the Kilted Klingon. He says, two-part question. Kapla. One, how do you recommend dealing with the question, where are your bagpipes? He says he happens to be a drummer in an all skput leader band. And two, dealing with the question about, sh and his answer is shoes and socks. He gets tired of both questions. We haven't answered that one. We haven't answered the question about the question in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do the bagpipe one first. Where are your bagpipes? Um, my, now, I am not a bagpiper. I am not a musician. So my answer to where are the bagpipes is, you don't want me to play the bagpipes. I will scare small children with my playing of any musical instrument. Um, the, the answer... My answer to the other to the whole question is um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be mildly harsh because <sighs> you're Klingon you can take it buddy suck it up Buttercup um, these questions have existed since the dawn of time of kilt wearing yeah um, they've existed forever they will continue to exist um, people will ask you what are you wearing under your kilt because <laughs> they think they are the first person like here here's the reality it's they think that they're being funny. Um, my name is Rocky. Since childhood, since birth, I have gotten the, hey, where's Bullwinkle? And, oh, Rocky Raccoon. And uh, Adrian. I've gotten those three specific jokes since the dawn of my life. And each person saying it thinks that they're the first person to say it. Hmm. So I don't take offense to it anymore. I'm just kind of like, you know, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's going on, buddy? Um, and I'll just kind of like move right past it because in their mind, they're not doing something offensive. They're not really trying to offend you. They're not trying to annoy you. They think that they're being funny and whether they are or not is completely open to interpretation. Their friends standing around with them in the bar may think they're being funny, but it is, if you want to be a, if you want to be rude. If they were rude in the, and you feel that they, the way that they approached it was rude and you want to be rude back, which I don't necessarily recommend, but if you want to be rude back, then your response is, Ha-ha! That's the first time I've ever heard that! You're so friggin' original! Good job, pal! If you want to be angry about it. If you don't want to be angry oh about my. it, just be like, ha Yeah! You know, I left my bagpipes at home. And you move on. It's 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 it does not have to be a speed bump in your day. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, this kind of dovetails into answering the question about the other question too. But it's kind of uh, you want to choose your battles and think about your context, basically. You know, like with everything else, it's like you know, is it worth your mental energy in that moment of your day to get into it? Sometimes the bagpipe thing is because they want to interact with you. They actually admire it. They admire the kilt, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to start. say. Yep. So they're tr it, sometimes it's actually an icebreaker. Um, I find this usually is more from little old ladies and such. You know, it's like, oh, are you in a pipe band? My son was in a pipe band. Or, you know, my dad played pipes. You know, something <laughs> I'm like that. lonely. Talk to me. <laughs> 
That's mean. That's I know. Mean. Sorry, I'm still. I apologize off, for him. I'm coming off the um, anger comments. But the uh, no, but sometimes yeah, sometimes it's a jab. Other times it's it's like they're a, a really weak attempt at an icebreaker, yeah. or just trying to show some admiration in an oblique way. Yeah. You know, so you got to gauge the person, figure out where they're coming from, and then you can respond accordingly depending on how much you give a damn that particular moment. Um, you know, it's similar to like you know our you know, it's the lowest level of a question along the lines of like. What's your clan? You know, or, oh, are you a McDonald? Or are you a Stuart? Like, they'll try and guess a clan based on a couple of names they know or something or, like that. Are you Scottish? Are you they Scottish? Can that too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, so I, it can be annoying, but it's, there's worse. You yeah. know, so I would say, I would say, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's basically, you, you covered the range. It's like, uh, it really depends on the person. If, if, if it's just like, if it's like a woman over in the Wawa, I'm not going to take the time to get into... He's like, well, actually, I don't play pipes. I am a kilt salesman. I've been studying Scottish culture and history for about 15 years now. Um, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to be like, you know, thank you. I actually don't play pipes, but thanks for noticing. You know, but other people, it, you know, you can you can, you can, can level up or level down depending on how much mana you want to spend, <laughs> you know? And that applies totally to the second question. Have a few pat answers. Right. All the way from mild to blue mm -hmm. <laughs> um mild to spicy yeah uh, if uh, so like you know uh, what's up you know, what do you got under your kilt uh, shoes and socks mm -hmm. um that will generally shut them up and they'll get a small chuckle and they, uh, they're in on the joke and really it's it boils I'm, I'm i'm throwing it back to that it's they want you to know that they know about the joke right that's it it's hey you should think i'm cool because i know about the thing that you have on there um, if somebody has on a band t-shirt that's like an obscure ska band that I love at the start oh, the ska blazers dude that was an awesome band like the fact that I'm interacting with them it goes back to that point of yeah. hey I know the thing that you're doing there I recognize you I see you I I know what you're doing that's awesome they're just <laughs> please, looking for an please breaker. cool guy validate me you exactly know, it's, it's yeah re and and you're not far off it's when when you're in a kilt you're the rock star not them Everybody else is in pants. Yeah. You're the dude in that. You're the outgoing one. You're the peacock in the room. So if somebody comes up to you and says like, you know, hey, you got some, like they're trying to have you interact with them because they want validation that you see yeah. what they are doing. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's yeah. the validation yeah. thing. Sometimes right. they are just being a jerk, but I think eh. I think I found the validation thing or the wanting to feel like they're cool by vicariously cool, you know, is more common. You will have the. Somewhat, somewhat inebriated uh, ladies who will want to know the answer to the question because they're trying to flirt in an awkward way. Or sober ladies. Or sober ladies, and sometimes they are actually genuinely just curious. You know, I've guys. Had, yeah, but I've had I've had women who come out here and are like, "Is it is it really true? I've heard those stories. Is it is it true? You know." And it's just like again, you gotta gauge your audience. You know, I mean, I'm not. If gonna they're be asking that way. That's different than. Hey, honey, eh, and they're trying yeah. to grab at yeah, the well, hem no, of your kill. Kill flippers, that's, that's, that's a hard stop. Yeah. That's that's an invasion of personal space, and that's disrespectful, and that's just like, slap. No. No. Unless you're single, and you find them, and you want to start no, a discussion, then you do I, you, buddy. Yeah, it's up to you, but I, you know, no means no, and no matter Understood. what. So, But the, um, blah, 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 blah. yeah, but, but people are just asking the question to get a rise or something, or making jokes, yeah. then, yeah, but then scale it based on the environment. I mean, do you want to... Do you want to mock them in front of the audience? In which case, uh, there's some guys who will say, uh, "What's the our classic one is like, uh, you know, I can't tell you, but if you give me your hand, I'll show you." Yeah, the one that that's you've, a blue one. The mm. one you've said before that I I absolutely love is uh, you're in a bar, a guy comes up with you know drunk, obviously drunk, with several of his guy friends, and says like, "Hey, why are you wearing under your kilt? Like, why are you looking for a date?" Yeah, and I love that one because it puts them on the spot and shuts, shuts them, them down up immediately. I Shut love them it. down. Yes, um, judo. So it's, it's mental judo. Yes, exactly. It's 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 the nuclear option for. <laughs> it depends yeah. on what you know yeah. where you want to fall on that scale, how aggressive you want to get, or blue or or you know mild you want to be. Now we, this is enough of a topic that we actually have a blog entry on the website which lists a few of our favorite. Uh, you know, non-committal, simple answers all the way up to some decent, you know, classic blue ones. Um, and basically make the same points that we're making here, that basically 
scale depending on the circum depending on the circumstances scale your response um so go ahead and read that it'd make my day if you did uh it's just i don't know where it is on the blog you just have to search the blog somewhere somewhere in there yep yeah favorite blue one yeah ask your mom yeah that i've heard it put other ways but yes. yeah there there yeah. are others I'm, I'm i'm trying to be pg-13 ish yeah so i think mom jokes are yeah. still kind of okay so mm-hmm. yeah Mr. Ian. Just wanted to follow up. You mentioned the blog a couple times. We've gotten multiple questions, including from the Ben Shenanigans. Where can I find the blog Eric mentions in previous episodes of KNC? Yeah, they basically... Go down to the bottom of the website in the footer. There's a there's a, there's a weird-looking B in the... Uh, yeah, there's several green the links. social media icons, and there's a B. Um, yep. There's a B icon for yep. blog. Lower left. Yep. It says, you know, it's just a B. That's for blogger. Yep. You know, from when we used to hey, have how they handle account. kilt lifters is when uh, uh, Joel, our tech, was just trying to bring it up for me. And, uh, uh, yeah, how to handle kilt lifters is actually the, one of the very first ones there. Yep. So, yeah. Indeed. It is an yep. ongoing problem. It will forever be a problem. No matter how much we rail against it or talk against it, yeah. it will continue to be a problem. Therefore, arm yourself mentally. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Until all the world is kilted. Exactly. So was that you or Ian? Uh, that was Ian. All right, what do you got? Uh, I'll tell you what I got. What I really, really got. Love in is what you got. Yep. I remember. Um, uh, I'm gonna throw throw a shout out to Joe Grobes. Hey Joe, uh, regular regular question asker, and he had a question which is I'm gonna answer. Uh, doesn't matter which buttonhole. See, we've gone from lowbrow with kilt lifters all the way up to highbrow uh, with proper fashion. Um, does it matter which buttonhole? You put your pocket watch chain through. I keep mine around the middle to low, but I see a lot of people going up to the top. Probably one of those you do you things, but I thought I would ask. Top would almost be awkward, I would think. I can't tell you, Joe. Yeah, um, yeah top. It basically yes. There is a um, there is convention with this, um, but people will, will change it up, you know, based on what they think looks cool. Uh, I think, yeah, top button looks a little awkward for sure. What the hip but, kids are doing these yeah, days. Yeah, those hip, those hip kids with their pocket watches. Um, yeah, when Steampunk was big 10 years ago, yeah, that would be the case. But to cut to the chase, the answer is basically you're usually going for a buttonhole which is above the line of the pockets on the waistcoat. Okay? Usually that means it's going to be about the third button up. Uh, most vests will have five or occasionally six buttons, like this one has six. Um, but you basically go th- up to the third one and that's that's standard is basically you just want to make sure that the chain is above the line of the pocket so you get that 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 swoop that loop yeah going from yeah. from up down into the pocket um that's basically it the other advice is that um typically you will have they will say to have the chain go to your off your non-dominant hand so if i were right-handed i would have the chain going to the left so that i can still talk to you and check the time with my off hand that doesn't work to me because i'm clumsy with my right hand so i actually have this on my dominant hand side but standard advice is that you have the pocket watch on your non-dominant side so that you can keep your main hand doing other things while you're just checking your watch to see if you can get the hell out of this conversation. Um, there you go. So one little aside I thought of I was going to bring up since Joe had asked the question is um, some guys will get confused based on the chain that came with their watch. So I just want to demonstrate this fact right here. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's like, uh, there we go. That is a standard pocket watch bar. It's often called an Albert bar. Uh, it's basically the little T-shaped thing uh, which comes with chains which are meant to go through a buttonhole. Either a buttonhole on a vest or occasionally if you're being really fogeyish, it goes through the boutonniere uh, hole on your jacket if you're doing like a early 20th century look. That is different from what you may find if you bought a watch in a department store a lot of time. Excuse me while I whip dun, this out. Dun, dun. Which is a, a watch chain which is what's called Ooh. with this put it against my vest so you can see that again can you see that probably can't yeah i'll fix it in post here it is um it's a clip which is meant to go over your uh your pants so this is not the one you want if you're wearing a pocket watch with a vest you can make it work you can basically shove this shove this in the (laughs) hole and then take up the extra slack because a a, a pants chain is gonna be a lot longer than a vest chain so get the extra slack down in behind the vest um and let it hang there hidden um, this this one actually currently has my car key on it. But uh, so that's that's the answer. If you're ever confused by the thing that you have on the end of the chain, that's go- what's going on with that. 
Um, not many people these days wear a double watch chain, which is where you have the, the chain for the watch, and then you have a second chain that goes through past the T-bar to another chain for a watch fob. If you do that, then it is going through that third hole up, so you try and make the arcs as symmetrical as possible between the watch and the fob. I do love symmetry. So you should probably get a, a, a proper watch chain with a fob. I've never seen you wear a pocket watch, though. So. I, I used to, but here's the problem. I never would check it. I don't care what time it is. Mm. I'll have my, I have mm -hmm. a phone for time. That, like, right. If right. I'm going to be checking. Like, so I, I, just, I, can't, I can't wear watches. I can't wear you know, mm -hmm. pocket watches. Well, that's why I was nothing. toying around with putting my car key on, on the chain. Yeah. Just for the heck, for the heck of it. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I still love them. I still love them. I have a small collection of them, a couple I inherited. Um, but, yeah, apparently Prince Albert was the one who popularized the T-bar. Okay. It's sometimes called an Albert bar, because he supposedly, well, he didn't invent it, but he popularized it, so. Nice. Go Victorians. Yay, go Team Victorian. <laughs> um, Mr. Ian. God save the queen. <laughs> uh, Quite. Before asking the next question, I'd like to share a comment from one uh, Coraline Petten. It's good to see you guys back in the studio. Ooh. Hey. It's good to see you in the comments, Cheers, Coraline. Coraline. Wow. Um, Miss you. Miss you, toast the dorbs. <laughs> and then I've got a question from YouTube from Zombie Chatty. Do you know if PV casual kilt hikers more often wear kilts at the traditional waist or jeans waist level and any known benefits of either? I know you guys just did a bunch of uh, stuff. We have, we have a video coming out. I'll probably be published next week, actually. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Although we don't really talk about equipment in that. But uh, I am wearing a PV kilt in that video, and I can tell you that my personal answer is you wear it around the jeans level. I think you probably would agree. Ian, you've, you've done a bit of hiking in a kilt, right? I have, and my brother partially through-hiked the Appalachian Trail. Well, he did through-hike the Appalachian Trail, but did it partially in a kilt. Mm -hmm. uh, we both did it in semi-traditional kilts okay. at more the traditional level. Okay, so but I, yeah. I would say one thing to be careful of, if you were planning on wearing a belt and buckle or a sporin, you have to consider your pack. I yes. know I have like a, an Osprey, like a hiking hydration pack, and they sometimes have like mm -hmm. a pockets on the sides yep. that come and clip in the front and that yep. can interfere with all of that yep so i don't yep. hike in a, i hike a lot but i don't tend to in a kilt as a rule um, okay. i tend to leave the belt and the sporn at home when mm -hmm. i do that but i have a picture of you ian i have a picture of you in the hiking kilt <laughs> when did that happen uh that was a few years ago <laughs> it was a few years ago um <laughs> yeah a few, few pounds ago a few a few inches in the hair but I, yeah but i would i would say basically um if you're not doing a traditional cut kilt if you're doing a casual cut kilt um, Ian was just referring to a, a semi-traditional, which is a model that we pr produce, which is basically mm -hmm. built like a traditional kilt, so it has a rise around the navel. That, to me, for hiking is less optimal because you have extra cloth around your midsection, which is going to feel warm mm -hmm. um, and a little constraining. Um, I prefer using a casual kilt around the, basically around, but a little higher than the traditional jeans waist. I use a web belt, uh, if I use a belt at all, because with a Velcro on a casual kilt, you don't really need it. Um, I have a, pa a small day pack which does have a, a waist belt on it as well. Yeah. So I don't want anything interfering with that, getting in the way of that. Um, and if it's a simple day hike, I might have a sporn on and very often move it to the side. But a lot of time I will not dis I will not use a sporn. I would say that, that extra warmth created in the middle section, like you talk about, I guess it just depends on the time of year, though. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if winter... Yeah, I tend to prefer be, hiking when it's cooler. I do too, I do too. So I could yeah. see it as an advantage. But mm -hmm. um, my temperature fluctuates a lot so i'd rather have layers i can pull off yeah than have thick layers i cannot remove so adam and eve just hiking with a fig leaf and that's it or well, multiple yeah. fig leaves because they get cold you know, exactly. but you can just throw a fig leaf off here and there exactly. and you know, start to overheat <clears throat> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same it's it's i prefer lower or if i'm on a shorter hike just for fun maybe something a little bit higher maybe a wool kilt um but if it's if it's warm summertime you know casual mm -hmm. yep now hiking in a great kilt that's a completely different thing. And that's definitely a fall to winter activity. Yeah. But that has, that's a whole other game. So. Indeed. I would say the one thing my brother discovered in his uh, his travels in the Appalachian Trail, especially for the, if you're thinking about backpacking and not just day hiking, mm -hmm. is you definitely want to have a pair of shorts in your pack. Because at night, that, that kilt is loaded with sweat, especially for the summer. So you want to be able to you know, throw that out. over a yep. branch or throw yep. it over, you know, hang yep. it up let somewhere it to let it dry out overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. That is a, 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 good, a good tip. Yep, I agree. Indeed. I, agree. I bet you smell delicious mm -hmm. by the end of the trip. Too. I don't. That, that <laughs> kilt could rival that uh, sweat-crusted scuba kilt we talked yeah. about earlier. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Spicy. 
I'm just like the the, 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 the slabs of salt, like ice, you know, like like iceberg, just like <laughs> the salt just. <laughs> and it's like, uh, I've seen leather armor in the SCA that people have sweated to, to death, and it is disgusting. It looks like freaking beef jerky, and it's just like sweat, for little white lines like continents, you know, just like, oh, it's bad, it's bad. Leather yeah. armor in Pennsylvania is not a good thing. Now that we've grossed you out. Um, what, what we That's what we here? do. Yes. Um, anybody who hikes in a kilt, by the way, send us pictures. I, yeah. I, now is the season. Well, not for me, but it's a little hot. But, yeah, I do love it. All right. This one's for you. This is, is going to take me a while to read this, so be patient. Alexander Frostmourne had a story to tell us. Basically, he's concerned about his godson. He says, My godson is of the Cochrane clan, while I'm a, a Macmillan. I want him to know he is fully welcome in my family. He's a young lad, and he's currently feeling disconnected from both my clan and his own clan, from a heritage standpoint. Is it wrong for me... And this is the technical side of the question. Is it wrong for me to take the Cochrane tartan and my tartan and put them together into one kilt for him? Kind of a half and half project. But the reason for all this is the poor lad is in a rough position. He's feeling a lack of connection within within his family, and he wants to join the Macmillan clan. But he doesn't know that it's not something you can just change like changing a sports team. So he's worried about his godson. <clears throat> Sounds like his godson needs yeah. some emotional support, and he's trying to do him a solid. And Okay, yeah. there's a lot to unpack there. Um, one, I would not do a... I'm, I'm assuming he's like a part part kilt. I wouldn't do like a half and half kilt, like half Cochran, no. half Macmillan. No, hard miss. Um, the maybe if you wanted to design his own tartan for him or have him design it and combine elements of both might work. Um, the and the part I will kind of disagree with is the it's not like changing a sports team. You can't just you know go to someone else's. You you can and you can't. Um, if you're in in Scotland, if your father was a bastard and you don't like the man and he abandoned your family and you want to wear your mother's tartan, no one is going to stop you from you know claiming your mother's clan and joining her clan or or just wearing the kilt. They wouldn't necessarily join a clan. Um, so I would say that it's it's not. It's not like joining a sports team or changing a sports team, but it's not not like it. Mm -hmm. um, here's where I would honestly go with it. Um, you love your godson. He has some kind of difficulties where he feels alienated or, or, or removed from his parents or there's something, something is there, but you want to show him that you support him, that you care about him, that you love him, and that you got his back. Here's what I would actually do is <clears throat> I would... Get him measured. I would tell him that you, you want to get a kilt for him in the McMillan Tartan. I would start there. I'd kind of be open and honest about it and measure him up. Then I would write him a letter. Not an email. Not a, I would write him a physical letter. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I would literally lay it on the table and say, like, all, get all the feels out there and say, this is what you mean to me. This is who you are as a person. This is who I am. This is how much I love you. This is how much I care about you. I would put it all on paper and I would get the kilt and the letter and I would personally give it to him and I would let him read it <clears throat> and I would let him know how much he means to me. It doesn't matter whether you're 40 years old and he's 20 or you're 90 years old and about to pass. He will have that letter and that kilt for the rest of his life. And any time he questions who he is, he questions who cares about him, he questions if it's all worth it or, you know, who cares, whatever, he can read that letter, he can wear that kilt, and he can know that you care about him and that he is part of your family and that he is worth something to someone and that someone gives a damn. So that's what I would do. Uh... Yes. I'm not trying to joke actually. That's that's that is solid. 
That is solid yeah. advice. Yeah, you don't have to do anything hokey or cheesy or a craft project to do this. It's about communication. Some people, Bottom line. So. Some people don't have a family support structure. Um, and right. some people have to choose their family through through want or through need they have to choose their family um, and if you are that to this young man then let it be known period right on yeah got real deep in here real quick no that's good that's yeah. good that's I like it when we can do something that feels like we're doing some kind of good yeah so. it's it's going to make a difference in his life now and forever so do that give him that he deserves it. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Ian. A lot of comments here uh, reflecting lumps in throats or tears in eyes as a response to your uh, <laughs> to your answer there. Dude, uh, I tear so. up at weird stuff. I was almost tearing up <laughs> there I myself. Like, I was too. It's not that weird. That's not weird. That's human. Okay. I'm not human. You're My right. wife does not believe that I am human. Now you're just a capitalist pig. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Um, <laughs> that brings a tear to my eyes. No, it's about, it's about Thank family. Thank you. It's about family. It really is. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah, Bottom chosen line. or not. It's about the caring about the people who care about you, period. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that's family. If it's not, you make it. Found family. Yep. What do you got? So what kind of mood are you guys in? Would you rather have an easy layup kind of a question or a question that could stir a little controversy? Any. Doesn't matter. Controversy between us or controversy... Uh, but more in the, I think you guys would probably have the same answer here. Well, but yeah. you're asking a question, so I'm going to go with it. So from Cody Ward on Facebook, he's staring it up here. He says, question here, have you heard of half kilts? And what do you think of oh, them? Oh, God. Would you consider them legitimate or fantasy? That's not... That's, that's, that's not, not controversy. I know we don't like to speak ill of our competitors here, but... Uh, Veralos is the main people I know who make those. They are not competitors. They are cool people. Um, but they are a fashion... Except in this instance. Except... <laughs> <laughs> you crossed the line, Veralos. They had too much grainstone. They are, we, got... are we issuing an online challenge to Veralos? <laughs> I don't think it's a challenge. It's a plea. Please stop. What in the hell are you doing? For the love of God. Uh, no. For all... That's an uh, abomination. Oh, man. Um, for those who don't know, oh, man. a half kilt as defined by Veralos is some kind of weird... Well, that's what they have on their website. Well, here's our newest abomination. <laughs> yeah. That's not in their copy. The um, it's it's like a, was it a quarter or half the way around yeah. the body? And yeah. Like a, 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 it's, it's got like two or three weird. pleats in it or something. Yeah. And you're supposed. No. To, I think you're supposed to wear it. It's almost like a. It's like a sash down on its luck. You know, you're supposed to wear it. Yeah. You know, it's it just hangs from your waist down one side, so it adds some kind of like flash flare. and yeah. flare. You know, looks good when you're leaping across the moors or something, but. it's... But it's like you wear it's like a, it's like an apron and you move it to the side. Yeah, I don't it's know. not traditional. I'll have to find, I'll find some images later to. But don't don't make it a thing. It's not yeah, a thing. Yeah, Please don't make it a thing. It's uh, it's a toy. Uh, we were we it's were asked, fantasy esque. Yeah, we were asked a month ago about um, sporns that have tartan on them, and and and, uh, and we talked about that abomination, and the fact that maybe you could make it work as a modern for fun fashion thing, and this is totally that. It's just a toy, in, in my estimation. I don't see that being a fashion thing that's going to stand the test of time. I do think that uh, utility kilts with color insets are probably here to stay, with tartan or different colors, you know, like the flag colors that are out there, or the you know the, the clan tartan insets, because black and tartan looks good together. So I think as a modern, for fun, casual fashion, going to a concert, going to a festival, that kind of thing, those are here to stay. I don't think that the half kilts will last. No. I would even bet that they're probably not selling many of them now. Um, I don't know if there's anybody besides Veralos who's making them. Um, I don't know, but it's nope. it's yeah. It when we say half kilt, literally, it's like it's just like a piece of cloth with a strap. So if you if you turn it this way, you'd have like a Princess Leia, you know, you know, groin cloth thing. You know, it's like no, it's like no. this this direction, Princess Leia, over the side, Veralos. No, just. just It I'm gonna get you one for Yule. Can you wear that with the tartan sporn? I'll burn that with the tartan sporn. Just, uh, <laughs> we should do we should do another uh, photo montage of worst possible outfit. Kill it with fire. But do but do like do like kilt um, novelties instead of just poor fashion choices. Do like you know combination of all the kilt novelty items that are out there right now. All the weird stuff that people have tried to 
come up with to push the envelope? That's an envelope. <laughs> I got nothing. That was fun. Just, no. Yeah. All right. Mr. Eric. Moving on. Please move on. Please for the love of um, God. Let's talk, about, let's talk about Highland dress now, okay? <laughs> um, speaking of fashion forward and changes to real Highland dress, not festival gear. Um, and I don't cast any spirit. If you like half kilts, I forgive you. I if don't. You, it, I don't. No, you should burn. Nope. If you nope. want to wear something to the Ren Fair, nope. Whatever. Nope. Nope. What happens at Comic Con stays at Comic Con. Um, Hopefully. Okay. Highland wear. Actual Highland wear. Lee Mager. Meager? Forgive, Lee. The, for, forgive my pronunciation. Good old Lee. Uh, Lee asked Are there any double breasted kilt jackets? I'm thinking along the lines, personally, of something maybe in a navy blue with fancy shiny silver buttons, or maybe cool bone buttons or antler buttons, you know, like a worsted wool, sort of like you'd see in a regular business suit as opposed to, like, thick tweeds. Is there anything like that out there, or is that not something that's done in Highland wear? The only, uh, the only double-breasted I can think of is, like, a Montrose. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had Joel uh, prepare an image of a Montrose doublet, if you, anybody's not sure what those are. Bring up the Montrose number one. Yeah. That is basically what you'll see on the, the left is a 19th century military uh, shell jacket, which is what a Montrose jacket is loosely based on. A Montrose doublet, as you see in the other pieces of that image, is based on a Napoleonic shell jacket, which was something that lasted up through the rest of the 19th century. Um, and it's almost always worn with a jabot, which is that lacy cuff thing. Very formal unless you're a rock star. Um, John McPhee. Yeah, like John McPhee from the Doobie Brothers. He, we, we sold him one. Yep, yep. Yeah, so there's another there's another example of how it would look like for a wedding or a formal situation. I don't care for that outfit at all. I like the color coordination, but I hate the fact that it's not black. It's 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 very formal, but it's not... It's it's, it's two degrees it's, off It's the, the sporn and buckle they're killing it for me yeah, on that one. Yeah, that too. But that is the only... Well, don't you wear a... You wear a belt with a... You do wear a belt over it. Yes, so. you absolutely do. I just don't like those picker ones. Um, so, okay, that's good. Thank you. So that is the only double-breasted jacket I know of. Yeah, existing. Um, mm -hmm. The It's not the 1980s. Um, you know, you, <laughs> it's not a, a double-breasted suit jacket. Um, it, yeah, it's it looks... Odd with a kilt. I don't know. It's it's asymmetrical ish. It's not a you know straight down the gig line. Mm -hmm. um, if you're gonna do something different, you can do a contemporary jacket and vest um, with uh, some contemporary fabrics, meaning like you know regular suit fabrics, um, not a a mm -hmm. wool barathea or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I wouldn't do double breasted. I think I think um, yeah. I mean it. I think that the Montrose is the only way anybody's ever made it look. Good. Decent, and that's it's very it's a very military style. I cannot imagine a double breasted like an Italian suit double breasted jacket with a yep. kilt. It would just look odd. And I think part of the reason for that is that um, your assessment is correct. It, it is basically that uh, most of Highland dress is symmetrical, and a big part of that is the fact that you have a sporin right in the middle of your body. Okay, so having a sporin there in the middle of your body, and then having the lapels kind of crisscrossed, you know, asymmetrical like that would look odd. Um, I have seen people occasionally, again, like rock star type people, um, or that one guy who did the, the cooking show with Gordon Ramsay in Scotland, and he had a lot of Montrose, they just wore it open. I've seen people wear a Montrose open to try and look dashing and rakish, you know, yeah. with it. And you could sort of get that, but, yeah, I can't see it being anything more than uh, a toy. It's yeah, a it's, 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 it's kind of costumey. It is kind of costumey. Um, it might be cool for a wedding or something. But I've never seen anybody do anything that's like a office wear, or daily wear, um, that's double breasted. So yeah. don't really recommend it. Now Barathea cloth, absolutely, and this is why a lot of people are getting more interested in uh, the Rothsay, Duke of Rothsay style, aka His Royal Highness or His Highness. Um, I think it's, his title changed now, right? No. Uh, um, the Prince uh, Charles. Princey, Princey Chuck. Yeah. Um, basically, his look something that's very clean. Uh, smooth, uh, suiting fabrics, and uh, sometimes decorative buttons, sometimes not. You know, keeping it very subdued. So, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, however you feel about the royal family, he's got a, a good style. And uh, yeah. it's, it, yeah, it looks good. 
Yeah, so I wouldn't do double breasted, but I do think that doing something clean and crisp is always a good thing. Again, simpler is better. When it comes to Highland wear, a simpler, plainer kind of look, a, 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 a less busy thing can look very, very good, very classic. Yeah. Indeed. Mr. Ian, what do you got next for us? So, I wasn't going to necessarily ask this question, but out of respect for my friend and yours, Cameron Waldron, rest in peace, he's actually been kicked <laughs> off of, He's actually been kicked off of Facebook for 24 hours due to a comment he left in our stream. Uh, he says, for Rocky... Really? If, he has. For Rocky, if you Do could... Do wish to associate with these people? <laughs> oh. For Rocky, if you could reissue any tartan in a muted colorway, which would it be, and why would it be Celtic Nations? Any I, tartan in a muted colorway. Um, hmm. I wouldn't do Celtic Nations just to annoy Ian. <laughs> Ian has been bugging me since we ran out of wool of our regular Celtic Nations cloth. Um, we only do it in PV right now. Um, since we've run out of wool, he's been, you know, on occasion giving me the the snide comment, the little the little jab of, hey, uh, you know, we. Uh, Celtic Nations muted. I can do it. Love that. Nope. No, I won't. It's I'm that guy. <laughs> I was just dig in my heels and say no. Mm. So I would I would answer the question with the negative side of the question of I would do any tartan except Celtic Nations. I was very good mm. about it for many years. <laughs> it's only recently come back up. <laughs> Cameron ruined it for you. Oh wow, he should be banned. Oh wait, he is. Um. <laughs> He hasn't seen your comment. <laughs> okay. Now, what tartan would you do in? in I don't muted? know. I'm trying to think about it. I like. I, I like. There's very few tartans I would not like in muted. Is the problem. I, yeah. I really like the muted palette in general. Uh, the only thing, the only palette I like better is the is the what I call jewel tones of the old um, Wilson's Wilson Bannockburn stuff. But but barring that, um, my I, I have the Cameron Eric muted, which I've always loved. I, I think muted is great for any of them. I'm biased that way. So I'm Indeed. trying to think. Oh, is there anything For those who don't know, muted. Hmm. Um, a modern tartan is navy blue, bottle green, you know, bright scarlet red, bright yellow. Um, right. Ancient is light pastel-y green, pastel-y, you know, light sky blue, um, and it's an orangey kind of uh, red. For muted, they took, you know, the, the, the green is an olive green, the red is a blood red, the blue is like a stormy sky blue, um, and the yellow is more of a gold kind of color. So it, it brings the color palette down a little bit. It's not quite as bright, not quite as bold. Um, so a lot of guys tend to like muted color palettes. If you lay you know, the same tartan, you know, cost being no issue, the, th the three of the same tartan, ancient, muted, modern, right across in front of uh, most men, I would say almost half would probably choose muted or, you know, more than a third, maybe half. I want to one. I'm, I'm, my mind's going to something that people think is obnoxious, and could it be improved by you making can? it muted? Like, I was gonna say Caledonia mm. or Loud McLeod. What does a Loud McLeod look like? Because yellow isn't really a well. They no, much it, of a, yeah, they turn it down to gold, and the red gets more subdued. To see, there you go. I think that would great. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah. So, what do you think, Caledonia muted? I think House awesome. would that save it. it? Yeah. I would say, in general, I'm not a big fan of tartans that are predominantly modern red. And this is where I'm coming at with the Celtic Nations that, thing. Yes, I yes. like a deeper muted I agree. red more so than I like a modern mm -hmm. red. I rule. think any predominantly red tartan would be improved by being muted, yes. in my opinion. Yes, my um, mm. uh, Steward of Appen red muted is pro is my favorite version of Steward of Appen. Um, and it's, again, it's that you know mm -hmm. maroonish kind of you know blood red. It's not the bright red. Yeah. Kind of color. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. That's my answer. There you go. All right, Mr. Eric. All right. Um, we'll do one more yours and one more Ian's. Okay. i got to figure out a question of the day because I have no idea. I may give it to you just because I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Um, Jeff Little asked us, tucked or untucked, summer is upon us. Is it okay to wear a T-shirt with your kilt and leave it untucked for comfort? It depends on the situation. If I'm... Is that a cop-out? No. Okay. Well, 
You get the are you, discover, you're not gonna, you're gonna, Are you going to lay down the law of the kilt, or are you going to say it's... It's if I'm at the beach, untucked, okay. and I'm in sandals. Not that I'm even in sandals at the beach. But if I'm in sandals at the beach in in a kilt, and it's a casual kilt, and it's, you know, I want the breeze, I want airflow and that kind of thing, sure, fine. But 90, almost any other time, I'm going to have my shirt tucked in. It's just, it's... I, I, I feel, personally, I feel a bit sloppy with a shirt untucked with a kilt. Mm -hmm. So I tend to keep it tucked in no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I largely agree. I, I tend to tuck in the shirt. Um, but let's face it. I mean, if you're wearing a kilt and nobody's around, if you're wearing a kilt to work, if you're wearing a kilt to you know deal with wood in, in the backyard or, or rake leaves or whatever, then who cares? Um, from a stylistic standpoint, I would even even on a warmer day, I'd still I don't know, just maybe I'm uptight about it, but I would prefer it to be tucked in. And if I'm wearing a kilt casually, I will almost always be wearing a belt. Converse to my comments about how if you're wearing a vest, you really shouldn't wear a belt. If you're going casual without any layers on top, then I like having a belt. It's part of the outfit. It helps define the outfit. It defines your shape. It just you know helps bring things together, and it looks awesome. So. I would want to show off the belt. I'd want to be able to show off the bling of the belt buckle. So I would tuck in for that purpose. I actually tend to very rarely wear printed shirts with a kilt because I'm a fashion plate, you know, but because no, I, I, I don't like, you're welcome. Um, I don't like printed shirts distracting from the bling in my outfit. So I will usually wear like a solid color t-shirt, maybe some jewelry and uh, let the belt buckle and the sporn do the talking and let the t-shirt recede into the background um so if you're if you really don't care and you're wearing a printed t-shirt at summer camp or something then okay whatever but i i would i tuck i definitely tuck it, it the t-shirt to me it also depends on well not the untuck or tuck but wearing a t-shirt with a kilt assuming i'm tucking it um i'll pick a t-shirt based on the graphic on the shirt if the graphic is higher on the shirt yes if the graphic dips below the yeah. the line of the kilt where it's going to be tucked in I won't wear that That's shirt. a really good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah, some, some designs will look stupid tucked in. They weren't designed for that. They're yeah. meant to be worn loose. So, yeah, that's a good point. So I think, I think those designs look better anyway. I don't want to accentuate my belly. You know? I don't want I don't want to accentuate this. I want to accentuate the chest. So, yeah. 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 Indeed. So, tuck it in. Yeah. Tuck it in, tuck it in. If, if I could uh, pop in here a little bit, I would tend to agree with you guys with almost everything you said. Except? Certain things that I tend to wear untucked. Uh, like, if I'm wearing a t-shirt even, I'll go tucked, which is a little bit more you could go either way on. But any of the styles of clothing that we're wearing, I would always tuck. Mm -hmm. But I tend to often wear, like, uh, a quarter zip pullover that I leave untucked. No. Or a Sweaters, hockey, yeah, pullover, different. hockey yeah. jersey. No, yeah. you don't tuck it. Yeah. 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 If you wouldn't well, tuck it with I pants. If I get too warm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you wouldn't yes. tuck it with pants, then you wouldn't tuck it with a kilt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Occasionally people will wear a, uh, like a military sweater tucked. And that's, that's, yeah. you know, uh, that, yeah. I, I have mixed feelings about that one. I think sometimes it looks cool. It's definitely an homage to the, the British military. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine. But I personally don't do it. But yeah. My, the reason I wouldn't do it is because it will untuck as I'm walking around moving throughout the day or if I have to go to the bathroom or whatever. And it's like if I'm moving around too much and it un, if it like half untucks, then it looks sloppier than just untucking it. And if it looks fine untucked, I would just leave it untucked. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. No. Indeed. Do with that what you will. Mr. Ian. Um, so we've touched briefly a couple times on topics related to great kilts today. So mm -hmm. let's, let's do this one from Stephen Manning on YouTube. What is the best way to wash and dry a PV great kilt? So I assume that's because that's what he has as PV, but perhaps mm -hmm. we can do PV and wool for anybody mm -hmm. else who has yeah. one of those. Sure. Um, the same way you would wash a PV kilt. Um, I would throw it in a washing machine with, you know, enough laundry detergent to, you know, cover it. Um. And then I would just put it through the laundry machine. I would not throw it in the dryer. Um, I would literally just get a laundry line. If you have the laundry line with like two so that you can get air on both sides of the fabric and the, the sides aren't touching each other. Yeah. Um, 
I would, you know, lay it out across that. Um, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I think um, um, I actually prefer PV fabric for great kilts after it's been washed a couple times because it's you can you can Softens intentionally soften it up a little bit and it just hangs better that way. Yep. You want to keep kilt fabric fairly crisp for modern kilts, but for a great kilt you want it to be flowy. Flowy. So yeah. Um, again, if you want to preserve the Teflon coating on the PV, then do it all in cold water. Um, if you're not concerned about the Teflon, then you could do warm water for PV. And you know. fabric softener or you know chemicals like that are what take the Teflon out. So yeah, right. if you're gonna do cold or warm, don't use fabric you never softener. Never use a fabric softener if you yeah, want if you the want Teflon. To on the there. Teflon. Yep, it right. gets kind of soft and, and almost like flannelish a little bit mm -hmm. over time. Once the Teflon coating and all the you know after you've washed a PV mm -hmm. kilt or or a grid kilt you know 20 times, yeah. it's going to get a little bit softer. So if you want to maintain the, the stiffness, the rigidity, the crispness um, yeah. of it, then yeah, no fabric softener. At the same time, abusing it a little bit would be good if you want to use it for some kind of a historical impression. Yeah, you got to beat it up. Yeah, beat it up a tiny bit. But mm -hmm. um, for wool, if you have a wool great kilt, what would you do? I would wash it in a bathtub or in a, uh, you know, a, a washing machine that does like the quarter turn every minute mm -hmm. so it's not agitating the fabric. Um, cold water, um, I'd let it, you know, soak in there. If it's in a bathtub, let it soak, you know, rinse it with some wool light or something that's, you know, good for that, the shampoo, whatever. Um, you know, rinse it in there, let the water drain out of the tub, squeeze it out real good, fill it back up with regular so water. Gentle, gentle hand wash. Lukewarm to cooler water. Okay. Um, let it kind of soak in there, let this soap kind of dissipate. Um, and then repeat that once or twice just to get all the soap out. And then I would squish it in a bath towel. You know, it's you can fold it up and kind of fold it up twice, maybe th you know, maybe three times. And, you know, put a bath towel down, lay the wool on there, put another bath towel on top and walk around on it. It helps get some of the extra, excess moisture out of there. Huh. Um, Interesting. Um, we have one of those, the, the folding, you know, uh, like accordion uh, clothes racks you can have in your house. Um, you get them in hotel rooms on occasion. So I'd open that up and like lay it across there. Just, you know, get as much air at it as possible to dry it. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, when we wash my wife's saris, um, I've sometimes taken like two dining room chairs and spread them out a distance apart. Make a tent. And then make it, and sort of make it, you know, like a, it's like, it's more like a bridge. It's like you swoop up to the top of the chair, then between them, and then over the next part, and just, you know, two or three chairs to make sure it's just like, off the floor, yeah, and let air dry that way. That's so, a good hack. I yeah. like that. Yeah, cool. So. All right, we'll do one more. Yeah, we got, we got, a, little, we got a couple yeah. minutes actually yep. here. So, um, okay. Um, Ed Easter asked us in terms of kilt making and fabric sourcing, what challenges does an asymmetrical tartan cause, i.e., with the pleating to the stripe or the set or any of that stuff? Asymmetrical tartans. Okay. <clears throat> asymmetrical tartans are different. There's, I would say three to 5% maybe of tartans are asymmetrical. The majority are symmetrical. Mm -hmm. By symmetrical, we mean that if you have a tartan and you have a stripe in a tartan and another stripe and you put a mirror right on that striper on a pivot, you're actually going to see the same on either side or it's like a mirror image of itself. Mm -hmm. Joel, why don't you bring in that Royal Stewart picture there? Ta-da! There you go. Yeah, the, um, the, we have an advantage that sometimes if we get a question ahead of time, we can prepare stuff, so. Indeed, look at us being all, being all fancy. Yeah. Um, the, if you draw a line straight down the center of that A or straight down the center of that B and you put a mirror right there, it will look the same on both sides. Now, Joel, grab up the other one, the uh, Buchanan, and we're gonna show you an example of an asymmetrical tartan. So for an asymmetrical tartan, let's pick the, the white line in the red there. If you put a mirror right on that white line in the red, one side is going to have yellow, one side's going to, you know, the other side has green, so it's not going to look the same right or left. So you right. see how we have it marked out as like A as the green section, B as the red section, C as the yellow section. It repeats that way. It doesn't, it goes A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C versus A, B, C, B, A. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down if it was symmetrical. Mr. Ian. You're a kilt maker. I am. I've, I've heard of your work. 
Um, the rumors are true. Yeah, the rumors are true. <laughs> You're, my, my payroll is true. You do work here as a filmmaker. Um, so what are the challenges? I'll let you answer this first. What okay. are the challenges to an asymmetrical tartan versus a symmetrical tartan? So uh, shout out to my coworker, Morgan, who's actually working on a Buchanan Ancient right now. There you go. Hey, Morgan. Um, so that same tartan we just saw in the image a moment ago. So one is when you're setting out your, your material, you're deciding where your front apron's going to go. You always put that point of symmetry right in the middle of the front apron. So what do you do when there's no point of symmetry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Buchanan's a tough one, specifically, because yeah. that yeah. red and that yellow are both so bold and vibrant yeah. that it's difficult to pick which one to center to. And, you know, sometimes you could go with that bright white line in there. That's one way to do it. I actually tend to go the area between the yellow and the orange as, as the center. But there's not a lot of very wrong answers with that one. Um, yep. Sometimes you get something a little, probably the most common asymmetrical tartan other than Buchanan is like the Stuart hunting. And that one has bold red and yellow thin stripes. And I tend to focus on one of those. So that way, at least those bold stripes yep, yep, appear yep. symmetrical. Um, it can also present challenges for the back of your tartan where your pleats are. Because um, again, you want to keep usually your point of symmetry in the middle of the back of the tartan which you can work around that. It's going to be as asymmetrical as the front sometimes, but your belt loops, you run into trouble sometimes because usually your belt belt loops are equidistant from that center, but now all of a sudden you have different things equidistant from that center. So sometimes you fudge it or sometimes you have to make two separate colored belt loops, which isn't ideal. Oof. No, I Ugh. wouldn't do that. I would still, mm -hmm. I would pick like something that's... Yeah, you try to get yeah. close usually yeah. is what I try to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The... Um, uh, the biggest challenge for, for me in ordering the cloth or, or well, when we get the cloth in, if we're making a kilt, um, is in you can't easily splice an asymmetrical tartan. The majority of mills knows that, know this. Um, so for asymmetrical tartans, they will sell the fabric single width. Whether they weave it double width or single width, they'll still sell it single width. So hopefully you don't have to splice it. If you, and this is, I'm going to challenge... Tom or Joel, whoever edits this video. If you <laughs> take Buchanan Tartan and you cut it straight down the middle, and then, there it is. If you cut it straight down the middle and then flip it 180, flip the top section 180 degrees, you have just reversed the pattern. So it'll, it will not work. What you have to do is cut it down the middle and then slide the top section to the right and drop it down. The problem is now you have a cut edge at the bottom on one side and a traditional kilt salvage on the other side. So a, a, uh, an asymmetrical tartan is very difficult in that way if it is not single width where you have a good edge running the entire length of the cloth. That's the biggest challenge, so to speak, mm -hmm. in asymmetry. It's a pain in the butt. If you're designing your own tartan, don't make it asymmetrical, <laughs> please. It's annoying. It may look nice, but it's annoying from a kilt maker's perspective. It's annoying. If you want to still like you anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So, do you have a question of the day today or no? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm going to go back to back to the story about the godson. I'm going to say, who in your life do you know who would benefit from knowing more about their clan identity or their heritage? Who out there do you know, maybe yourself? has felt that emotional boost from getting in touch with their roots like that. And how did it play out? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Indeed. Until next time, boys and girls, thank you for joining us, and Slanjava. Slanjava. Pocket squares and lightning. Very, very frightening. Highland wear. Highland wear. Highland wear. Highland wear. Gilly Brogues. Gilly Brogues. Gilly Brogues. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs>